The following is a presentation of the ACC Network, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports. We have four ACC teams that remain undefeated. That ties for the most undefeated teams in a Power Five conference, but through four weeks of play, what's your take so far? Katie, right now we have one contender, and that contender happens to be Clemson. You mentioned equality. We have equality in the ACC. We just don't have a lot of quality, and that's what you need. Right now we have the top 15 teams in the nation, the AP and the coaches poll. We have one, which is Clemson. SEC and the Big Ten have four. All right, well, you mentioned we don't have the quality maybe this year, but you know what we do have? A whole <laughs> lot of quarterback chaos going on right now. Uh, we do have quarterback no uh, problems, I say, yeah. in the ACC. We've had a lot of injuries. Quarterback's the only position where you touch the ball every single play other than the center. He's right not touching now, it anymore. Uh, Josh Jackson's out, broke his leg earlier. He'll be replaced by Ryan Willis, a transfer from Kansas. Nikosi Perry, the very talented redshirt freshman, great running skills, started against North Carolina, 8 for 12. 125 yards, one touchdown, one interception. What about this guy? You talk about the Iron Man, broke his <laughs> collarbone versus Northwestern's second game of the season. Practice 10 uh, has been announced a starter by David Cutler yeah, for the night's game. And then Trevor Lawrence, the multi talented true freshman for Clemson, will be seeing a lot of him for the next few All right, years. Let's start there with Clemson because, Coach, listen, we knew it was only a matter of time. Trevor Lawrence was announced on Monday to be the starter. And then Kelly Bryant said this I was just going to control what I could control and try to make the most of my opportunity. But at the end of the day, I just don't feel like I've gotten a fair shot. Now, that for me sitting here, is hard to take in. I'm hoping it's a knee-jerk reaction. You've been through this. Uh, what was your initial reaction? Yeah, I mean, a, a tough, tough decision. I've had to do that once with a freshman quarterback and a senior, and it is hard. And I can understand Kelly Bryant's uh, uh, disappointment. Uh, Dabo Sweeney, however, made the right decision. But you can see what, what he's thinking. Two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago versus Texas A&M, they're sitting there in the middle of the third quarter. The coaches are looking for an answer. Momentum has changed in Texas a and uh, favor. Trevor Lawrence has just gone a couple series. Nothing's happened. And all sudden Kelly Bryant comes in and wins the game, plays the last quarter and a half. So I'm sure some disappointment on his on his part, but again the right decision by Dabo. You gotta play the best player, right? That's exactly. what coaches do. Kelly Bryant, 16 and 2 as a starter and a leader, already graduated early. I think Dabo Sweeney was thinking when he made this decision, <laughs> he'd still have two quarterbacks. Now he's got Trevor Lawrence and a couple of young backups. Coach, what do you say if you're him to try to keep him around? Well, that's what what, what kind of words do you tell him? I, I yeah. don't know if I wouldn't have gone to Nick Saban or Urban Meyer. If you remember right now, Nick Saban just went through the same thing with Jalen Hurts, very productive, and went with a freshman. And also Urban Meyer a couple years ago had three quarterbacks, very talented, some of them in the NFL, one of them changed positions, but didn't lose any of them. So I don't know if Dabo shouldn't have maybe called Nick Saban. You've remember done that. Well, a couple years ago when I lost to Nick Saban, uh, eight, years, uh, eight years ago in the first game of the year, I said, listen, I don't play you again. I'm not in the same conference. I'm going to call yeah. him and see what kind of tendencies he saw I might have developed. Yeah. He studied me for six or seven months. And he months. answered you honestly. Oh, yeah, he Didn't answered he? me. I, I talked to him and very helpful to me. So, again, I don't know if Dabo did that. It might have been helpful, but uh, he made the right decision. So you guys do co do talk to one another. <laughs> oh, yeah. Coaches talk. They may not admit it. Well, we have to give Dabo some credit. Uh, four is the magic number with this new role. He made the announcement going into week five, which gives Kelly Bryant a chance to continue on. Now, listen, we could talk about this all day. Let's talk about the game because I'm sure that Clemson has not forgotten what happened last year. It was Friday the 13th. Syracuse a 24 point underdog and then Eric Dungy did a little bit of this all game long. He had a huge game. Kelly Bryant unfortunately was beaten up a little bit ended up leaving the game early that led to the Syracuse Orange upsetting the nationally ranked Clemson Tigers 27 to 24 in the Carrier Dome. Well, they may not have had the Tigers attention last year, but Syracuse certainly has it this uh, year. Well, Syracuse didn't get Clemson's A game last year. They will get their A game this year. There's no doubt that Syracuse has Clemson's attention. And uh, a lot of them depends on the play right there of Trevor Lawrence. But I think the key in this game is going to be the play of Eric Dungy. Right now, he leads the Syracuse in rushing. And uh, his ability when protection breaks down with Clemson's great front four, 
for. Can he make things happen and keep positive plays with his legs? So I, I look for him to have a really good game. And then also some of the hidden factors. Uh, field position. Right now, Syracuse punter leads the ACC in punting yardage. And also their field goal kicker, 10 out of 11, leads the ACC. So when they get in red, red zone, they need points. They can't afford to get shut out. And Clemson has, uh, Syracuse has some pluses, I think, in the kicking game that are going to be helpful. And you got to mention the defense, too, because Syracuse has certainly made strides there and improved. Speaking of the D, that brings us to Geico, presents the best of the ACC. Last week, Syracuse's fantastic freshman defensive back, Andre Sisco, added another interception to his ACC lead. He now has four picks on the year. But on the other side of the ball, NC State's Ryan Finley continues to air it out, averaging 352 passing yards per game. He currently ranks fourth in the nation and looks to climb the ranks against Virginia this week. We will get to see him in action at 20 after the hour. You can see he's already out on the field, pumped up for the game. The Wolfpack taking on Virginia Cavaliers. And coach, it's hard to believe this is the first meeting between these two programs since 2012. So for Dave Doran, who's been with the Wolfpack for six seasons, this is the first time he's prepared for the Virginia Cavaliers. What's the biggest factor for you in this one? Well, the biggest thing is going to be, I think, the play of Virginia quarterback Bryce Perkins. He's got to make some plays with his legs. NC State defense. Defense, ninth in the nation in scoring defense. Well, this year, Ram Trunks and Bojangles are giving ACC fans a chance to win the all-new 2019 Ram 1500 Laramie Crew Cab 4x2 featuring uncompromising luxury. You can enter for your chance to win now through November 11th at the ACC.com slash truck giveaway. Ram built to serve. Well, this is one guy that we can't wait to see in action. Senior wide receiver Alameda Zacchaeus. Uh, he built like a running back, 5'8", 190, but he got the hands of a wide receiver. Second in the ACC in passing yards and second in the ACC in receptions per game. We are less than 13 minutes away from kickoff. Stick around. So much more to come. The ACC Blitz is powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. We will be heading to Raleigh, North Carolina shortly. You saw Alameda Zacchaeus before the break. Here's junior wide receiver Kelvin Harmon warming up. Oh, yeah, Alameda, 5'8", 190. What about Kelvin Harmon, 6'3", 214. Leads the ACC in passing uh, yards per game, 104. Means he can make something happen with it after the catch. Second in the ACC in reception at six per game. Dave Doran certainly happened, hoping <laughs> you make something happen today. Well, week five in the ACC got going on Thursday night down in South Florida. Florida, number 16 Miami hosting North Carolina. We weren't sure if we'd see Malik Rogier or Nicozy Perry. Perry got the start, but he didn't need to do much work because the defense did it for him. Uh, over time on the turnover chain, Shaq uh, Quarterman right there forcing the fumble. Jonathan Garvin picking it up in a nine yard return. And then we have Joe Jackson with a 42 yard interception return for a touchdown. And then we have, gosh, Romeo Finley, 83 yard. Interception return for a touchdown. Three defensive scores. They're going to have to open up a new goal mine. They will. More chain. That, gold on that chain. <laughs> that tied a school record with the three defensive touchdowns. That turnover chain became a touchdown chain. 47 to 10, the final. And the quest for back to back coastal division titles is on for Miami. Mark Rick afterwards saying, We want to get back to Charlotte. And that was certainly a good start as you look at where things stand right now. On the Keep table. your eyes down there at the bottom. Bottom. Top. Uh, second from the bottom, Duke could be the best team in the in the coastal. Nationally ranked Duke over in the Atlantic. No surprise to see number three, Clemson, sitting at the top, followed by Syracuse, where they are just about to kick off today. And then Wake Forest and Florida State round out the bottom. Well, later tonight at 7 p.m., we have Virginia Tech in town taking on the number two, Duke Blue Devils. The first time they're ranked since 2015. And this one uh, is huge news because Daniel Jones is back starting after breaking his <laughs> collarbone two weeks ago. I tell you what, that's amazing. He must be the Iron Man because he I've had that injury before. Man. Pretty handful. I think it was his left clavicle that was injured, uh, being a right-handed thrower, but uh, was playing really good come in. You know, up when he got hurt, he was 29 for 39, 389 yards, four touchdowns. So, so uh, Daniel Jones was playing well. Well, before that game happens, we will see the Cards hosting the Knolls. And, Coach, this one seems like it is a must-win for each team in regards to bowl eligibility. I know it's only week five. 
two teams headed in the same direction. Katie, unfortunately, it's the wrong direction going toward the bottom of the conference. Both really need to win bad. Yeah, they do. Both Florida State and Louisville looking for their first conference win, and they've got the opportunity today. Hey, don't forget, you can follow today's game and all ACC games with scores, stats, highlights, and live streaming. It's all on the Toyota Game Center on the ACC.com, and it's all brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. Well, that junior quarterback from Arizona, Bryce Perkins, sure makes his coach Bronco Mendenhall happy. He's completed over 70% of his passes last week. It'll be a tougher task against NC State's D today. Hey, stick around. We'll be back to wrap it up after this. The ACC Blitz is powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500. Well, we are inching closer and closer to kickoff in Raleigh. You can see both coaches getting set there. This is the ACC opener for Dave Dorn and Bronco Mendenhall looking to go 2-0 in ACC play with a win today. And his quarterback <laughs> has been impressive. What kind of impact do you need to see from Bryce Perkins? I tell you, Bryce Perkins has played well. One of the reasons that Virginia right now is second in the ACC in third down conversions, the ability of the quarterback to make good decisions. That's Bryce Perkins. He's made good decisions, <laughs> that's for sure. Looking to do it today. Hey, let's head there now. Tom Wormy. Dave Archer and LaRish Harris have the call. Guys, take it away. Thanks, Katie. A beautiful day in North Carolina's capital as undefeated NC State takes on Virginia. Both teams are led by dynamic quarterbacks and have high hopes for a division championship. The NC State Wolfpack set to take the field here at Carter Finley Stadium. It is their first ACC game of the season as they welcome the Virginia Cavaliers. It is the 58th all-time meeting and is the Raycom Sports ACC football game of the week. Virginia and NC State here in Raleigh, North Carolina. It is so great to have you with us for our game this afternoon. Tom Wormy along with Dave Archer. Larisha Harris will join us in just a moment. Dave, Virginia's 3-1 coming off a conference victory last week against Louisville. For NC State undefeated for the Wolfpack. This is their first ACC game, and they've got the top passer in the league in Ryan Finley. Yeah, we're expecting high-level quarterback play today. Let's start with Ryan Finley of NC State. Ryan Finley came in as one of the most highly regarded quarterbacks in the country. He is not disappointed. Three consecutive 300-yard games. Now, he's had to. NC State has not been able to run the football, but make no mistake, this fiery competitor can sling it all over the yard. Now, to have the kind of numbers that you have as a quarterback like Ryan Finley, You've got to have guys go get the ball. Outstanding receiver core. The headliner, Kelvin Harmon. Back-to-back 100-yard -back games. Tommy's coming off of a 1,000-yard season a year ago. This is a prototypical big-time wide receiver. Now, those are two players with a lot of experience in the ACC. Bryce Perkins is a first-year player for Virginia, a junior college transfer. Dave, we know he can throw the ball. Nine touchdown passes, but he can also run it, too. Yeah, and they're worried about that here in Raleigh. NC State has been preparing for Perkins. Outstanding passer, but a dynamic runner. And a week ago against, for, against Louisville, he made it look like Lamar Jackson was playing quarterback for Virginia. Had a tremendous amount of runs. In fact, he leads his team in rushing. He's a tremendous two-way two threat at quarterback. But he's got some help as well. The leading receiver in yards for the ACC, Alameda Zacchaeus, is at wide receiver. They'll try to get this guy the football in a lot of different ways. Dynamic player is Zacchaeus. Now, we've talked all sorts about offensive football. But, Larisha, I know they're going to play some defense today. Tell us about it. Well, NC State's defense took a big hit after the NFL claimed last year's front four in the first four rounds of the 2018 draft. But they aren't starting completely over. Those guys that are in those positions this year, they have some experience, and they've already exceeded expectations. So far, they lead the ACC, allowing just 13.3 points per game, and they've shut out their opponents in the second half. The pack hopes to continue that momentum in today's game. It's interesting talking to the, uh, the coaching staff here and you talk about what they've added from a player's standpoint, they point to Ted Roof being added to the staff. Ted Roof, former defensive coordinator at Georgia Tech, his recent job, he's come in here. He's the co-defensive coordinator, handling that back into the defense for Dave Huxtable, the defensive coordinator that's been here. They love the blend of these two guys, and NC State's defense is reflecting that. Dave, NC State is also ninth in the country in points allowed, just over 13 points per game, as Larisha alluded to. Virginia won the toss and elected to defer. So NC State will get the ball first as the Cavaliers will kick it away. It'll be Brian Delaney kicking to Maurice Trowell. 
Standing at his goal line. That'll sail through the end zone. And we're ready for our food line impact players, Dave. And we'll start with a pack on offense. You know, I wanted to give a big guy up front some kudos, and this guy has been a stalwart at left tackle. 33 consecutive starts, all ACC a year ago. All he does, Dave Dorn says, is does his job. And when you're on the blind side of the quarterback, you love that. On defense, Juan Thornhill moves from corner to safety. He leads the team in tackles. They say this guy is one of the smartest players they've ever coached in Virginia. 77 degrees and light breezes here at Carter Finley Stadium. Gillespie, the running back behind Ryan Finley, who has completed almost 69% of his passes this season. And there's another one at the 28. Going out wide to Jacoby Myers. The junior has the catch. Tackled by Joey Blunt for three yards on the play. We well, see the numbers for Ryan Finley. Comes in one tenth of a percentage point in completion percentage ahead of the great Philip Rivers. Yeah, it's uh, one of those uh, one of those deals where he's got to try to hang on to him. You, you got to play him. You got to play him. You got to get him in there. Can't rest him in the ninth inning. Finley rolls and throws, and that one is caught at the 38-yard line. Kelvin Harmon came up to meet it. Ten yards and a first down for the Wolfpack. Now, this is what makes Ryan Finley so dangerous is his ability to throw the ball from different positions. They move him. They make the point of throwing the ball to the outside. Uh, this is this is a guy that has all the throws big time arm. Yes, this is guys on the radar of the teams in the National Football League in the signal call. Dave, he's got a disciplined diet, very serious about his sleep habits. Now he wants to go deep down the middle of the field and a leaping attempt is made inside the 25 yard line. Omeka Imezi pulls it in for 40 yards from Finley. When you got a receiver core that attacks the football the way these guys do, and a little throwback special here, I thought that Finley picked out the wrong guy to throw to. Harmon was wide open, but when you got like guys like Imezi that'll go get the football, and let me tell you, you're going to see it all day long. I haven't seen a receiver core attack the football the way NC State does. Got a good example there from Amezi down the pipe. Ryan Finley, who averages 352 yards passing, best in the conference, and fourth in the nation. Pack going to the ground game to Reggie Gillespie, the senior from High Point, North Carolina. A modest one-yard gain for Gillespie. This is an area that uh, NC State, we talked about it off the top, NC State has struggled to get any kind of run game going. Naheem Hines in the National Football League. Jalen Samuels in the National Football League. Gillespie is that guy, the holdover, the senior that's been here for a while, but they have just, just been not been able to get any ground game going. And on the other hand, Virginia's been very good against the run. Pack averaging 108 yards rushing per game, 13 for the ACC. Second and nine. Gillespie right side. Forges his way inside the 20 yard line. Yeah, good hard running by Gillespie to, to finish that run. Looked like he sealed up. Chris Peace is going to be the linebacker, number 13, that's going to fill the gap properly, plays off the block of the receiver, steps in, but then a good job of finishing the run by Gillespie. Here's our red zone brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. No team better on third down in the conference. 58% conversion on third down for the pack this season. It's a very good red zone defense that Virginia puts on field, only giving up three touchdowns. Finley tried to connect with C.J. Riley at the 11 yard line. It is incomplete. 32, Darius Bratton coming up for coverage for the Cavs. Now, good job by Bratton to hold inside leverage. He allowed the receiver to get to the inside, but then immediately got his eyes back to the quarterback or was able to get his right hand in there. The crowd felt like that maybe Bratton arrived a little bit too early, but the officials felt like it was right on time. And a good job after a couple of big plays by NC State offensively to force the field goal attempt by Virginia. Christopher Dunn, the freshman field goal kicker, trying to put some points on the board for the pack, and he'll do it. From 34 yards away. <laughs> NC State able to get that field goal in the early moments of the first quarter on Raycon Sports. ACC football is being brought to you by New York Life. Start a plan that flexes with yours. By your Carolina Ford dealers. 
by Coyote Tractor, by Hardee's, and by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. The Wolfpack players come to Carter Finley Stadium and led by their head coach, Dave Doran. It is sixth year and eighth overall. He's got 60 career wins. Joe Reed, twice last season, Dave, with kickoff returns for touchdowns, including the opening kickoff for 98 yards in the military bowl against Navy. 29.7 yards return a year ago. That was eighth in the country. This guy is really dangerous. From the two. Reed smacked down near the 20 yard line. 20 yards on the return for Joe Reed. Time for our Carolina Ford dealers. Keys to the game with Dave Archer, the pack of the Cavs. Well, this will be a very important for uh, Perkins to do this. Think before you drink. Think before you drink. When you start talking about Virginia defensively, we saw them rally a little bit against Drinkwitz's offense for NC State. You've got to find a way to sort out what they're doing on offense and get a stop. They did that and keep the quarterback in the cage. NC State wants to pin Perkins to the inside and take away the run game. Ellis has the run on first down for Virginia for three yards. Great conversation, Dave. We had with Dave Huxtable, the 50 year co defensive coordinator, along with Ted Roo, who we showed you at the top of the broadcast. But I love the terminology by Coach Huxtable. Keep that quarterback back there and in the cage. Yeah, they wanted to cage him in, Tom, and I think it's a good term. They, they, they are very concerned about Perkins' ability to run the ball. He leads Virginia in rushing. Second down for Bryce Perkins. Pass complete near the 30 yard line. Hassis Dubois, the junior, with the grab. And he's got seven. More food line impact players, Virginia on offense. Now, Jordan Ellis is a guy that's done an outstanding job of running the football in the back end. I said that Perkins leads at yards per carry, but you see the number at 448. He leads the team in rushing three, considered 100, 100 yard games. He's got two this year. And on the other side, Jermaine Pratt makes the transition from safety last year to linebacker. Played a ton of games here, but now finally is a starter and really the quarterback of the defense. Top tackler on the team, although Virginia able to come up with a first down just beyond its own 30. Jordan Ellis. He'll get nothing and have to accept it on first down. That's the number one concern for. NC State is they've got to stop the run. It's a two headed monster with Perkins and Ellis. Lead block, it's blown up at the point of attack. And this is something that NC State, Tom, has done a ton is play on the other team's line of scrimmage, on their side of the line of scrimmage. And then another tackle for loss there. Lost so many quality players from that front line a season ago, including Bradley Chubb, the number five pick overall to Denver. Perkins extending the play and that one incomplete to Tanner Cowley off his fingertips and we got some activity on that Virginia sideline and a penalty flag is out. A couple receivers for UVA in the same spot so you wonder if somebody got held on to. Yeah, little pass interference offensively. So referee Gary Patterson and Bronco Mendenhall in his third year as the head coach of the Virginia Cavaliers. He's 11 and 18. Let's see if we can get a look. Pass interference. Offense. Penalty is declined. Third down. Yeah, that's one of those plays where all the receivers are trying to scramble to free up for their quarterback and he had three receivers in the same area and NC State decides to decline the penalty. Well we told you that NC State was tops in third down conversions. Virginia second best 55 percent on the season. See what they've got here on third and 11 Perkins going nowhere. Swamped under Jermaine Pratt leading the way loss of two. Fourth down for Virginia. As a linebacker, you have to read your keys. Now, Pratt is a guy that's going to do a, a great job of finding a way to get in on the on to the quarterback. His key was the guard pulls, I'm crashing. And so coming from that backside linebacker spot, great speed. Remember, former safety, six foot three, 240 now. Fun to talk to him yesterday, Tom. He's excited about his opportunity to now be the leader of this defense with all he lost a year ago. Thayer Thomas 
the deep man for the pack near his 22 or 23 yard line. Lester Coleman with the punt. Thomas meets it at the 32. And taken down right there. Punt of 40, return of just one as Snowden made the play on special teams. Let's check in with Larisha Harris on the sidelines. Hey, Dave, I remember yesterday when we were talking about Jermaine Pratt, you talked about how big he was, and you just mentioned his weight. Well, every summer, the strength and conditioning coach, their staff, um, they award a young man for their top performers during the offseason program. And guess what? Jermaine Pratt won the Alpha Wolf Award for Leadership. So shows you why he's so big right now. Alpha Wolf. How would you not want to win that award? Alpha Wolf in a wolf pack? Pretty good. So NC State goes back on offense from its own 31 yard line. Finley. Near the 45 and pulled incomplete. 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 Boy, Bryce Hall does an excellent job at the corner spot to compete against this. Talked about that this NC State receiver core really will go attack the football. Excellent job here by Bryce Hall, the junior. Let's see if he's able to squeeze this one. He thinks he held on to it. Fisher called it incomplete. Got that left hand in there. Did he cradle it in? Does it slip between the arms? Looks like it may have slipped through. Hall, who does have one interception so far this season, very close to another. On that first down play for NC State. Trying the left side with Person. There is no gain against this Virginia defense. Talmui is going to come down the line right here, going to flow down the line to make the play defensively. Poor job by NC State to cut off. And the freshman, Talmui, goes right down the line to make the play. Just his third tackle on the year, but a big one on second down. Finley on third and ten with the clock rolling here in the first quarter. 8.35 to go. And the pack up by three. Finley's pass near the 40. Taken in for first down yardage. Imezi, 13 yards, and the chains move for NC State. Now the sophomore wide receiver, Imezi, finds the hole in the zone. Good job of getting the ball out on time by Finley. And if you get the ball out and your receiver understands the window, it's going to be tough for a defense to get to the football. Excellent execution by both the sophomore receiver and the senior quarterback. Second catch of the game for Imezi, 17th of the season. For the sophomore from Waxhaw, North Carolina. First and ten pack. Finley kept it. The pitch. C.J. Riley got dropped for a loss of three. We're going back to our Charlotte studios. An update, Temple and Boston College. And this studio update is presented by Hardy's Try an All-Star Meal. B.C. on the board first, Coach. Anthony Brown's 11th touchdown pass to tight end Tommy Sweeney, seven yards. But the Owls answer right back. Uh, Temple running back Ryquell Armstead, 75-yard touchdown run, his first touchdown of the season. But then B.C. fumbles on the kickoff return. Temple returns it for a touchdown. It was under review. The call stands. 14 to 7 Temple in the first. This is our first and 10 line brought to you by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. Down the middle of the field, and a diving attempt comes up empty for Kelvin Harmon as Finley airs it out. Wow, that's something that he doesn't normally miss those shots. Excellent deep ball thrower. We've already seen it so far today. A little window dressing in the backfield. Safety stepped up, and in behind was Harmon. A little bit more air into the ball by Finley, and that's probably an NC State touchdown. Boston College is trying to bounce back, Dave, after their first loss of the season at Purdue last week. After the Eagles had gotten into the top 25 in the national rankings. Yeah, it was a tough loss for them out in West Lafayette against Purdue. Third and long with just over seven minutes to go in the first quarter. Finley has to improvise. Throws it. Deflected away near the 45 yard line looking for Thayer Thomas Juan Thornhill on the dive and deflection and it's fourth down and the beauty in the back end for UVA as we take a look at Finley trying to avoid Chris Peace the linebacker he does but Thornhill on the back end is a member of former corner 
He's an excellent job of finding Thayer who was in the slot and covering him up. So they've got a safety back there that's not a necessarily a true safety, a guy that can cover man to man. Did a nice job there of jumping Thayer. AJ Cole with the punt for the Wolfpack. Chuck Davis at the 19 avoids the first wave and spins up near the 33 or 4 for Davis. The punt was 42. The return for Virginia was 12. That's Brock Miller made the special teams tackle. We'll be back to Raleigh on Raycom Sports right after this. This year, Ram Trucks and Bojangles giving ACC fans a chance to win an all-new 2019 Ram 1500 Laramie Crew Cab 4x2, featuring uncompromising luxury. Enter for your chance to win now through November 11th at the acc.com slash truck giveaway Ram built to serve. How about that giveaway, Dave Archer? I was wondering why you showed up in one of those. Things. You are not eligible, by the way, <laughs> just to let you know. Virginia football Perkins rolls it and throws up near the 40 it is caught by Alameda Zacchaeus the senior from Philadelphia Pennsylvania for seven yards 34 consecutive games now for Alameda Zacchaeus with a catch in a game this is the guy they'd love to get the football in space to and you start talking about what Perkins brings to the table obviously Zacchaeus is going to be one of their featured guys but Perkins ability to do a lot of stuff run the ball gets the ball out of the backfield appears to be somewhat of a broken play and NC State will end that abruptly Darian Roseboro and a loss of three I say gets the ball in the backfield for Perkins he actually caught a ball out of the backfield last week actually injured one of his fingers let's take a look at the run game little dive option excellent job by NC State to blow it up at the point of attack Darian Roseboro one of those holdovers from that excellent defensive front from a year ago. Excellent job by NC State on the D line. They have had great D lines here for quite some time. All avenues for Bryce Perkins were closed off and now third and six. From the 37 of Virginia. If they got the snap away and they did not, that play clock was running down on Perkins in Virginia. Penalty against the Cavs as we go to our Charlotte studios in Katy. This studio update is presented by Hardee's Try an All Star Meal in Atlanta, Georgia Tech on top, Bowling Green. Uh, Georgia Tech running back Jordan Mason, nine yard touchdown run. And here, Daquan Marshall, one yard sneak to score for the Yellow Jackets. 14 to 3, Georgia Tech on top as we kick off the second quarter. Yeah, the Jackets need to get back on track. They've struggled offensively. Going to try to get after Bowling Green today, get themselves back in a, a decent motion on offense. First ever meeting between those two programs. Perkins trying to put some touch on it near midfield. Going up and fighting for it was Dubois. And he's got it. First down, 23 yards, Dave. Well, Dubois does an excellent job here, and a good job by Perkins to put him up to bat. If you're going to go one on one, you got to give your guy an opportunity. As Dubois did not do a very good job of saving room along the sideline, but like we've seen NC State's receivers do, he attacks the football over McLeod and makes a big time catch. Dubois has got it for the first down for Virginia into pack territory. For the 45, Perkins just does get that away. Stretching for the catch is Dubois again. Tanner Engel on the play defensively for NC State. They got five. Dubois is the biggest receiver for this UVA team. Let's take a look at the pressure in front. He fakes the quarterback draw. Early heat through the middle by the freshman McNeil. But a good job of Perkins buying a little bit of time and finds the six foot three Dubois on the outside with a little trace route. Three catches now for 35 yards for Dubois. Second and five. Right up the middle, Jordan Ellis. Maybe just a little bit short of that first down marker as he got four yards up the center. Jermaine Pratt on the tackle, number three, along with Smith Williams. Well, it'll be important for NC State and the defensive line to be able to control the in part, inside part of the option game. 
because if they have to tie up too many resources to take away the run through the middle, then they're going to get hurt on the outside by Perkins. So he's a double-edged sword in the run game. Third and short, Virginia. Perkins wants to try to throw to get it, avoids pressure, and his pass is too far in front of Alamade Zacchaeus. Fourth down. Well, James Smith Williams, number 39, is going to come clean. Bryant, 91, is going to find a way in there. You see Jermaine Pratt, number three. A lot of NC State players around the quarterback, and they're fortunate they got there because Zacchaeus is wide open down the field, but the pressure kept the quarterback from being able to get the ball out. So Bronco Mendenhall will try to go for it on fourth and one. They have made their two previous attempts this season. In this situation, Ellis, submarine move at the 35-yard line into Jermaine Pratt. Needed to get to the 35, and it appears that he has done so. It is a first down. Well, Tom, you said it. He submarines to get this because he is stopped initially, and he goes underneath Pratt and lunges forward for the first down. Jermaine Pratt is in perfect position to stop this play, number three, and he goes underneath, keeps the knees elevated, legs driving. Excellent job of finding his way to the to the marker by Ellis. Jordan Ellis second in the conference day. He averages 112 yards per game, but that was a very important one yard pickup on fourth down for Ellis. Perkins looking toward the five. It's caught. Zacchaeus has it, and he's in the end zone. 35 yards on the connection. Perkins to Zacchaeus. Well, NC State is a risk-reward defense. They're gambling, getting a lot of people around a line of scrimmage to stop the run game. And Perkins is going to see this man coverage down the field. Good protection for him. And he finds his big-timer Zacchaeus down the field. As Ingle, the freshman, couldn't make the play. Cavaliers, 35 yards on the play. Bryce Perkins. Came to play and he finds the key is for the touchdown. We'll be back after a local word from ACC stations. Tailgaters are born here. And it starts with Bojangles' famous chicken and biscuits. It's Bojangles! It's Bojangles time at Bojangles. Grab a big bowl box. Feed the whole group. Bojangles, chicken, biscuits, fixings, and tea. This year, Ram and Bojangles have teamed up to provide one lucky fan a VIP trip for two to the Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game, a Bojangles Ultimate Tailgating Package, and a brand new Ram 1500 truck. Enter to win at the ACC.com slash truck giveaway. December 1st, Charlotte, North Carolina, that championship game. Fifth TD catch of the season for Zacchaeus. Tenth TD toss for Perkins. Seven three Cavaliers. There will be no return from Trowell. Tom, let's take a look and see what Bryce Perkins saw in this play. Safety's up. They're going to commit him to the line of scrimmage. Zacchaeus in the slot, one on one in man coverage. Now all I need to get is protection. Little play fake, good protection. Zacchaeus in the slot, runs the post. Ball thrown a little bit behind, but Zacchaeus gears down and makes the catch against the freshman. They knew they were going to get some opportunities in this game because of the way NC State plays aggressively up front. Some shots down the field and another big play for this Virginia offense. See what kind of response the pack has after giving up the explosive play. To allow Virginia into the end zone to take the 7-3 lead. Bodine cuts it back towards the middle. Let's go back to Charlotte for another update with Katie. This update is brought to you by Hardy's. Let's head to Memorial Stadium where the Tigers are finally on the board. A little trickery by quarterback Trevor Lawrence of Clemson allows Travis Etienne to bull his way into the end zone from one yard out. 7-6 to six, Clemson. It is the start of the second. Katie, thank you. That pass to Steph Lewis. Tim Harris had the tackle. Of course, we all remember last season in Syracuse. Defended the dome against the Clemson Tigers. Their only loss of the season prior to make it into the college football playoff. Yeah, big time win, knocked the quarterback out of the game. So, heck of a matchup down there. Third and one day. I know that Clemson's uh, attention is definitely on Syracuse <laughs> this year. 
Both teams undefeated in that matchup as well. This is third and short. Bodine, enough for a first down. Got two. And here's our track phone matchup to watch. How about tonight, Dave, in Durham, Virginia Tech, and Duke undefeated in 22nd of the country. Yeah, first time since 2015 for the Blue Devils to be ranked. Daniel Jones will play in the game. That's kind of late news, but Daniel Jones will start. Quentin Harris did an excellent job of filling in. They got two pretty good quarterbacks there. Jones back from that clavicle injury. This pass is complete. Thayer Thomas dances his way up to the 45 yard line. Zane Zandier has the tackle. Tom, this is something that uh, North Carolina State's going to have to implement. They're going to have to implement some of these screens because they're not able to run the football. They've not been able to run it all year long. They need to use the screen game to help slow this pass rush down. Going to try to run it here with Bodine. Spins for a short game. You're right, Dave. 108 yards average per game on the ground for NC State. And that's 13th in the conference. That was something that uh, Dave Dorn was concerned about, that they had not been able to get their run game going. Remember, some big timers are playing the National Football League, and so they've got to have somebody step up and be that bell cow guy to run the football. And Gillespie and Bodine are those two guys today. First down for the pack, closing moments of the first quarter, coming off of that win last Saturday night at Marshall. 37 to 20 where Ryan Finley threw for 377 yards and one touchdown that's into traffic and a double coverage near the 39 yard line and knocked down to the turf by Bryce Hall excellent job by Hall we've seen him already come up with one earlier in the game in an interception Hall the corner is going to jump this crew out excellent job with his eyes Finley tries to keep safeties out of the way but Hall never really came out of his back pedal. When he got to the top of the backpedal, he drove on the football. Excellent job of getting in there and almost came up with another one. Finley has only thrown one interception this season. Third year starter, transferred from Boise State. His offensive coordinator was Eli Drinkwitz. The last be left side. He's got some room. Second effort, 45 yard line of Virginia. Eight yards on the run. Clock ticking down though, Dave. And just what the doctor ordered, if you're Ryan Finley and NC State, need a little something out of your run game. And Gillespie rips off a nice run on second down to get this the third and short. We expected a good one. Cross division rivals. One comes from the coastal, one comes from the Atlantic. It's a battle at Carter Finley. Our first quarter stats are brought to you by Tums all even in the passing game day. Yeah, but I bet both coaches are taking a couple of Tums over that rushing attack. Neither rushing attack going very good. But look at the average on first down. Both highly successful on first down. And it's because of the passing game, not the running game. Perkins with that TD pass to Zacchaeus. He was four or five on that scoring drive. Two for four on third down, third and short for the Wolfpack. Reggie Gillespie hops down near the 40. Thornhill the tackle. You know, both these teams have the ability to heat the quarterback up with pressure, and the only thing that slows that down is to find some ability to get a little something out of the run game or the screen game. NC State probing with their run game on the last the last two plays and have been able to get a first down. Gillespie ran for 81 yards and a couple of TDs in the win at Marshall last Saturday. 37 to 20. 502 yards of total offense for the pack against the Thundering Herd. That pass is complete beyond the 40 to Myers. Spin cycle and taken down after seven yards from Ryan Finley. Good quick throw from Finley. Myers is in the slot. Quick out. Going to beat Snowden, the ACC Defensive Player of the Week, a week ago. Eight tackle to sack and interception for Snowden, number 11. But a good job by Myers to get a good play on first down. And again, when you're having a tough time running it, that quick game, the quick outs, the hitches, those all become huge on first down. Finley from a solid pocket to the 20 yard line and taken in. Emeka, Emezi. 
18 yards just on the so, grab. Just so impressed, Tom, with the way the res these receivers attack the football at the high point. Slant route, a little slant route by Amezi. Working against Nelson, their nickelback, and an excellent job of squeezing the football. Contested catch, another one for NC State. Three catches for 69 yards for Amezi. Gillespie trying to turn the corner at the 15. Penalty marker is out as he stumbled to the 10 as Zandir took him down. Holding. Number 53. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Second down. Let's head down to Larisha for Gatorade. Heard around the cooler. Well, this week when we talked to head coach Dave Doran, we asked him about the development of Ryan Finley. He told us that his first year here, it was all about survival. The second year, he started building relationships with his teammates and everybody else. In the third year, that's when he began to get comfortable and everything started to flow. Yeah, Finley showed up his first year here right as fall camp started. So he was just trying to, to mix in and try to win a job against the guy that was really pretty good, Jalen McClendon. Number 53, offense, five-yard penalty. Still first down. Back to back penalties for the most veteran of the offensive line. Howard Jones, our food line impact player, 33 consecutive starts for the big fella. And he's gotten flagged a couple times in a row. But it's been a it's been a neat growing experience to watch Finley. We've had a chance to come up here and watch him grow into a big time player for Dave Dorn. Don't forget next Saturday we're going to the Steel City, Syracuse and Pittsburgh. Last time we did their game two years ago, Dave, we had 137 points. Put on your seatbelt for that one. Pole left side, inside the 30 for Ricky Person, the freshman. He yeah, got seven. Looking forward to going to Steel City next week and watching the Panthers and the, the Orange go head to head. Syracuse at Clemson this afternoon. Pittsburgh on the road at Central Florida. Not an easy task for either. 12th play of the drive, but it's second and 18. Finley inside the 20. Hits Kelvin Harmon. Tries to turn it upfield. Bryce Hall gets in the way for the Cavaliers. 11 yards on that play. That throw right there is what kind of excites people about Finley. That's a wide side out route to his big timer Harmon. Corner was off but his ability to make that throw and now you're back into a manageable third down situation for Finley. But his willingness to take that deep that long shot across the field makes him different than a lot of quarterbacks. Pack one for one in the red zone. 34 yard field goal from Christopher Dunn trying to get more to the end zone. Touchdown. Emeka Emezi just took it away from the defender. Emezi 16 yards from Ryan Finley. Well, sometimes you need your receiver to bail you out. Finley's going to get to this late. Gets late pressure, but his throw is late. But Amezi comes back to the ball. I've been talking about these receivers attacking the football. Amezi realizes that Brenton Nelson's got an opportunity to steal this throw, and he goes and gets it. Boy, Amezi has had an outstanding game to start here in the first quarter in a few minutes. Sixth TD pass of the season for Ryan Finley. Well, you gotta have guys make plays, and Amezi has done that. He comes back and makes a big-time catch for his quarterback. NC State leads. ACC football is brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. By Progressive Insurance. By First Citizens Bank. By Yellowwood. How about that mouthwatering tailgate going on here at Carter Finley Stadium with the pack up 10 7 after the 41st career touchdown pass here at NC State for Ryan Finley, sixth best in school history, and Bambard will kick it away. Reed, the deep man, along with PK Kyer. It's going to be Reed near the five. Reed, 40-yard line. 
And stop near midfield. Dunn had to make the play. 43 yards on the return. Time for Know Your Score brought to you by Lending Tree. Let's go around the ACC. How about that Syracuse defense? Talk about Clemson's defense. It's 7 6 in the second quarter. Boston College in a battle. Georgia Tech's got their offense. Looks like rolling again. We're looking this afternoon. Tom talked about Pitt going to UCF. That'll be a tough one. And of course, at the end of the day, that Duke taking on Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech reeling after their loss a week ago to Old Dominion. And Duke ranked for the first time since 2015. This is Perkins. Flag is out. Throws on the run. Pass is incomplete again. A yellow flag on the play. Looking for Zacchaeus with Ingram in coverage for NC State. During the run, legal block in the back. Number 44, offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Let's take a look what's going on around the league of quarterbacks. Obviously, the big news this week Kelly Bryant decides to step away from Clemson. Trevor Lawrence named the starter there. A lot of things going on with those two guys, and obviously, Kelly won't play anymore for the Tigers. But the Jones, Quentin Harris thing, Jones back in the lineup. You see all the guys that have stepped in. How about the Cozy Perry stepped in nicely on Thursday night for Malik Roser? Steps down, and of course, tonight Virginia Tech out without Josh Jackson. And is it Ryan Willis? Is it is it Hendon Hooker? We'll have to find out who does it for Justin Puente. Perkins' pass is complete to Zacchaeus. Pass midfield, first down yardage, 14 yards on the play. This after Perkins' day was four or five on the previous drive where they scored the touchdown. Yeah, I'm impressed with his command of what they're doing offensively. Obviously, came in in the spring as a transfer, a junior college transfer. Really, when we talked to Jim Days, does a great job with their sports information. Talked about he's really a power five transfer. He was at Arizona State. Wanted him to play receiver. He got had a neck injury. Went to junior college. Wants to play quarterback, and that's what they've got him doing here at Virginia. He gets stopped cold. Deontay Holden all over Perkins, and he drops him in the backfield. And this is what NC State does. Lock steps in without anybody touching him, and puts the quarterback on the ground. A force third and long, trying to get this Wolfpack faithful into the game. They've been a little bit dormant here, trying to rally here. Is the Wolfpack trying to make a stand on defense? Cavaliers one of three on third down in the game as we play in the second quarter, third and nine. Perkins pass nearly picked off by Ingram as he's looking for Zacchaeus. Yeah, the ball thrown a little bit too far upfield by Perkins here. He makes the right read. Zacchaeus is going to come in on the slant. But an extra job of undercutting the route on the outside by Ingram, and he almost stole it. Yeah, good, good, good job there, and a good stop potentially for NC State. And they've left a lot of their defensive players on the field just to kind of figure out whether Virginia's actually going to punt the football. Lester Coleman, the all conference selection from a season ago to punt for Virginia. Bayer Thomas is deep at his 10. Bounces at the four and goes into the end zone. 51 yards on the punt from Lester Coleman. When we come back, it will be Pack Ball, the bell tower on the beautiful Raleigh campus of NC State. And up by three. Welcome back to Carter Finley Stadium. The Wolfpack currently up 10 7. A new tradition, though, for the Cavaliers. After every victory, they smash a rock. I was told that this is symbolic to moving up or climbing up a mountain, and the only way to reach the top is to go one rock at a time. And during last game, we saw that Charles Snowden was the one who actually smashed a rock for the Cavaliers. Well, he had a huge game a week ago against Louisville. He surfaced when they needed him. They've got their banged up at linebacker. And Charles Snowden, monster day. You see his numbers right there. ACC linebacker of the week, and he's going to have to pay a huge role today for, for UVA on defense. Snowden had the first sack of his career in that win against Louisville 27 to 3 last Saturday. Also had a fumble recovery and the eight tackles. This up near the 25 yard line. And Mezzi, now his fifth catch of the game. He's working on a career high in yardage as well. 
He has a 16 yard TD reception, 91 yards so far in the game. We're in the first half for Emeka Emezi, the sophomore. He just took that ball away from the defender in the end zone to put NC State up 10-7 on its previous drive day where Finley was six of seven tossing the football. Person. A pad cracking run of two yards for Person. You know, Ricky Person, the highly touted freshman, Lake Forest, North Carolina, Heritage High School. Over 2,000 yards rushing his senior year and 38 touchdowns. They, they are excited about him and the potential for him to step in and become that new guy in, at the running back position it just hasn't happened yet. Four of six on third down of the game. Third and three for the Wolfpack inside of nine minutes to go in the second quarter. Tom Worby, Dave Archer, Larisha Harris on the sidelines. Finley with a quick drop and throw beyond the 40. Kelvin Harmon, very capable hands, has the catch. It's a first down. There is a Virginia player shaken up on the play. Uh, Brenton Nelson is the safety kind of nickelback came over and made the hit. And that's the second time really Nelson's had kind of a helmet to helmet collision. Had the had the collision with Amiz with Amezi in the end zone on the touchdown that the fine receiver for NC State made. And this is going to be another collision. Excellent read by. Finley to get the ball out and then comes in and hits his side of his head on Harmon's shoulder. We'll step aside for just a moment after a word from your local ACC station. Back in Raleigh attending to Brenton Nelson, the sophomore from Miami, Florida, shaken up on the previous play and last year as ACC Defensive Rookie of the Year. And here's the hit comes in as Head kind of bangs against the side of Harmon. That's a big receiver now, 6'3, 215 pound receiver. Nelson, a big time player for him now. He's a big part of what they do. Let's hope he's okay. At 13 starts a year ago and four interceptions for Nelson in that back end. He already has one interception on the year for the Cavaliers. So he's a big part of who they are, the secondary. First and 10 after the completion to Kelvin Harmon. Back to the air, Finley. It's too far for Steph Lewis, who is trying to create some space back with Tim Harris, number five in white for the Cavaliers. Finley had completed six in a row prior to that, Dave. He's now 12 of 18 for 148 yards and the TD pass to Emezi. That's a good job by Harris. They tried to double move Tim Harris, number five, right there in the corner. And he was having none of it. He stayed in the perfect position, no place to put the ball. Second and ten for NC State. Three and zero on the season. Two and zero here at Carter Finley Stadium. Wins against James Madison and Georgia State. Ricky Person fighting for midfield. A late flag at the end of the play as Person continued to move. Yeah, I thought this was a late call. Tom looked like there was holding right at the point of attack. Now it's an excellent run by Person, but it looked like it was holding on NC State. Holding. Number three, offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. Penalty against Kelvin Harmon. We're going back to the Charlotte studios. This update is brought to you by Hardy's. Let's head to Death Valley where it's bad news for the Tigers. Uh, Clemson's worst nightmare. Freshman quarterback Trevor Lawrence scrambles left, takes a vicious blow to his upper side of his body in the neck, shoulder area on his right side, which is throwing side. Here you can see the impact right at the top. Redshirt freshman Chase Bryce quick to get ready on the sideline. Syracuse up 13 to 7 right now in the second. Tom, what are the chances? We go about Kelly Bryant stepping away, left the team, did not go well. All the comments that were made. Now Chase Bryce, who we talked to Dabo Sweeney at the beginning of the year, he was very comfortable with Bryce calling the shots. Let's hope that Trevor Lawrence is okay. From the 36 for Finley. Has to get out of that pocket. Finley. Tackle near the 38 by Zandir. Two yards for Finley. It's so hard for a defender at that second level. Zandir does an excellent job of kind of trying to stay in coverage, stay in coverage. Now I'm going to come get the quarterback. See, Zandir is right in the middle of the right in the middle of your screen there. And then he's going to come up and make the tackle. But he had to stay on coverage long enough for Finley to declare himself as a runner. So nice play by the sophomore linebacker. Eight tackles a week ago for Zandir, tied for the team high with his teammate Snowden. 
five of seven on third down in the game for NC State from its own 38 yard line third and long. Finley's got the time. That ball up for grabs at the 20 couple of white shirts there with him Mezzi. And it's an incomplete pass Thornhill back in coverage for Virginia. Oh with these receivers this is worth the shot. Most of the time you don't throw the ball late down the field a little bit of hand fighting by both Thornhill and a Thornhill trying to fight to get to the football too and you can make a case it was some P.I. there but with the ball being kind of a jump ball I think the officials let him battle it out. And Amizi almost came up with a Mezzi almost came up with a one handed stab but good job of taking away the initial throws by Virginia. One from A.J. Cole. This is Kelly right at the 17 and got hit immediately. 44 yards on that punt. And Nick McLeod makes the play on special teams. Negative two on the return. UVA gets a stop. They're going to get the football, maybe. Oh, good catch on the back end. The AP Top 25 brought to you by Progressive Insurance. The Tigers leading the way at number three, Dave, but in a fight with the Orange today. Yeah, they're battling in uh, Memorial Stadium. And you see Duke ranked at 22. They've got a big one tonight against Virginia Tech just down the road. Miami, of course, with an impressive win on Thursday night as the turnover chain was in full, full view on Thursday night against uh, North Carolina. Three defensive touchdowns in that game by the Kings. They won 47 10 on Thursday against the Tar Heels. They'll swing it out left. Zacchaeus going up that sideline. He's got the touchdown catch for Virginia in the first half. That represents their points. That's a nice wrinkle here. Going to fake the jet sweep and then throw it to Zacchaeus coming out on the swing with a blocker out in front. Just another one of those ways that you kind of get to the run game through the passing game. Zacchaeus out in space. That's exactly where they like Alameda. He makes a ton of plays when you can get him the football with room to move. They got 15 yards on that previous play, classified as a run. Little play action for Perkins. Has a receiver angling to it, but it's incomplete to diving Joe Reed. Well, I think it's a good throw from Perkins, too. There's no safety in the middle of the field, so Perkins can pull Reed to the inside. I think Reed expected the ball more up the field and just didn't adjust as quickly as he needed to. Opportunity for a big play goes by the boards there for Bronco Mindenhall's team. Second and ten. Pack out in front. 10-7. 58th all-time meeting, but just the fifth time in the last 15 years that these two teams have gotten together. Perkins standing tall and delivering to Zacchaeus. Tough to bring down. First down, Virginia, and 14 yards. McLeod on the tackle, the junior from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Take a look at this route now. He just screws McLeod in the ground, gets an inside release. McLeod is convinced he's coming to the inside, and then he does a great job of an arm over back to the outside on the out route. Perfect throw from Perkins, and you have a first down. Zacchaeus very crafty. He's got great speed, so as a defender, you're concerned about that. And then his ability to run routes like that one make it doubly tough. Four catches for 70 yards for Alamade Zacchaeus, the senior. That's Ellis. Short gain on first down with five and a half minutes to go in our second quarter. So far, North Carolina's done a nice job against the Virginia run game. I think that uh, that defense in front, the linebackers committed to stop the run, both the quarterback and Ellis. Both those two guys, those two guys both came, came in. Uh, running the football at an extremely high level, and they've taken that away, but they have not been able to keep Perkins hemmed in in the passing game. NC State, fifth in the conference in total defense. They allow 346 yards per game. Perkins trying to add to his total, and he did just get it away and threw it into the first row. Boy, Brock Miller, number 12, has the chance for the sack here, and Perkins is going to step out of this. Six foot three, 215 pound quarterback. Look at number 12. Miller is right there, but he just couldn't get him down on the initial thrust on the tackle. And Perkins saves a ton of yardage by throwing this ball out of bounds. 
One for four. That, you think about that, Tom, it would have been third and about 20 had Miller been able to get him on the ground. Because he didn't, it's third and eight. Bryce Perkins, the junior college transfer from Arizona Western. Took that program to last year's junior college national championship game. Faced with third and eight. Perkins with a quick toss in complete shy of the 40 to Evan Bucks number 46. I like the call they had a number of NC State players up in the line of scrimmage tried to fake quickly and throw in behind them but uh, just didn't connect quarterback and tight end. I think Perkins has been impressive though. Doing a nice job. Big big game a week ago against Louisville and playing well here on the road. Yeah, he threw for three TDs last week against the Cardinals. Thayer Thomas gets away from it, bounces at the three, and goes into the end zone. That punt from Lester Coleman of 53 yards. Here's our first Citizens Bank forever first, and for the first time, first time, NC State had seven draft picks, a school record. Early this year, Dave Bradley Chubb leading the class. Well, and you look at Chubb and Hill, Jones and Street. That was their starting defensive front. All four of those guys went in the first four rounds of the draft. That's why it's kind of cool to see them reload. I mean, talk about Bradley Chubb and what he brought to the table. He was unblockable here. Not only was he good against the pass game, was outstanding against the run game. Just a devastating edge edge pass rusher. And a, just a force on all three downs already with eight tackles, a sack and a half as the Denver Bronco. This rush, second level person, first down. He'll let you know. 20 in red goes for 12 yards. A Ricky Person now starting to emerge. He's had a couple of runs. This is something they were looking for. An offensive line with somebody to run the football behind him, and the true freshman starting to make it happen. He does it again. Just short of midfield. How about those back to back jaunts by number 20, Ricky Person? Now you challenge that offensive line, come off the ball and give Person an opportunity. Got an excellent block on the inside by the tight end who was playing fullback there. Got a good block for him, frees him up. 28 yards on the last two runs by Person. Turns the corner, little high step at the 40, avoids a tackler, and Person is down. They'll mark him out of bounds near the 25 yard line. But when you bounce the ball to the outside, they've got big receivers here. They do a good job of catching the ball. Can you block? Stephon Lewis, number one, gets a key block on the outside. And then we get a little, got a little Walter Payton right there with a the little shuffle of the feet and a high step. 55 yards in the last three runs by Person. He needs a breather. Give it to Bodine. How about 12 yards, 16 yards, and then 27 before the run by Bodine. Now you can bet there was a little challenge levy to the offensive line along the sideline by Dave Dorn and his staff. Hey, can we run the ball? Well, they've, uh, they've answered that on this drive. Second and eight. Approaching the three minute mark of the second quarter. NC State has a field goal and a touchdown pass from Finley to Imezi. Bodine tripped up at the 15. Well, don't think the way they have thrown the ball here in the first half hasn't affected the run defense as well. They've done a nice job of spreading the ball around, and now all of a sudden they're coming off and running the football. Here's our red zone brought to you by CPI Security, the official security partner of the ACC. Gillespie now the running back for NC State behind Ryan Finley, the graduate student from Phoenix, Arizona. 95 yards rushing in total in the first half for NC State. Maybe a timeout for Bronco Mendenhall. Prior to the snap, timeout, Virginia. That's their first timeout of the half. So we'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this word from the University of Virginia and North Carolina State. 
this university is on a march to achieve our full potential. We help empower each other to dream big and do big. That's why I really love our slogan, Think and Do. When you get these folks from NC State, they don't mind rolling up their sleeves and getting their hands dirty. Companies want to hire NC State students. We make something impossible possible. We have been equipped to go out there and do great things and to change the world. It's in the DNA of the place. We're here to think and do the extraordinary. Back in Raleigh, North Carolina, Raycom Sports celebrating 35 years of presenting ACC football. Tom Wormy, Dave Archer, Larissa Harris on the sidelines. Well, look at the play selection there. Five rushes. Haven't seen that all day. And, and obviously, a commitment to try to run it. You needed to get some push, some movement, and you've gotten that. Good blocks. And you got Ricky Person was able to pound it ahead. Now, here we go, third and short. Are you willing to try to run the football here? Bronco Minnan will burn the time out there on third and short. Don't necessarily like his defense. He's set up maybe to give his guys an opportunity to rest to potentially stop a running play right here. Five of eight on third down, third and one. Two of two in the red zone, a field goal and a touchdown for the 10 points for NC State. Then they'll give it off. The last speed trying to fight for every inch. Ran into Chris Peace. How close is this going to be, Dave? All right, this first down. He got to reach yet. Looks like he has to reach just beyond. I would call for a measurement there. If I'm, uh, I don't know if he can do that. I used to be able to call for a measurement. So it is fourth down. The last be short of the line. Now this is uh, this is one where you get a, a 215-pound quarterback. At, Six foot four, you just lean him forward here. I think that NC State's burning a timeout here. As much to talk it over is to potentially maybe get a measurement here. This is really close. The Ram Power Play is brought to you by the all new 2019 Ram 1500. You've probably seen this a few times over the last week, and guess what? Worth one more look. Bryce Perkins. The hurdle he covers 36 yards last Saturday against Louisville, and he did it later as well, Dave. Well, the irony, obviously, of what he did, and this is that was the touchdown run at the end right there as he tumbled into the end zone in Virginia's big win over Louisville. Obviously, from what Louisville had been watching the quarterback prior to this year do, that's some of the things we saw from Lamar Jackson, and that's really what Perkins has been for Virginia so far this year. He's been a dynamic playmaker. Both throwing and running, and that's exactly what Lamar Jackson was. Perkins threw for three touchdowns in that win against Louisville, where Virginia did not allow a touchdown for the first time since 2009 against an ACC opponent. I'd be surprised this isn't the QB leaning forward, but. Uh... Two for three on fourth down for the season as Finley tries to back his way. I think the ball came out initially. Tom. Looked like it wasn't clean, Dave, on fourth and one. And they've held him short. He's short of where the ball was prior. Based on the far official come running in, he was marking it short of the 15-yard line. Needed to reach the 15. See, the ball is bobbled a little bit right there. He immediately comes clean. Finley came up short, Dave. That's the indication we're getting from the officials. Has the ball even been spotted yet? I can't even see the ball in the field. There is some confusion on the field. The chains want to move. The, the down marker says fourth down still. Is the ball in the ground? I don't even see the ball spotted. Previous play is under further review. So he just said the ruling on the field was a first down for NC State. But it is under review, and since the ruling on the field is first down, you have to have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call. Well, which one, Dave? Let's take a look at it. It would award the ball to Virginia because it's fourth down. Well, you're not going to get anything out of that. I mean, that just, I mean this is just your at the, at the mercy of wherever the ball is marked. You see the ball come loose now. Is Finley on the ground when the ball comes out because he catches the football right there. Now it doesn't matter whether he leans forward or not, he's already on the ground. It's just hard to tell. It's hard to see it there. The ball is certainly loose. 
You see Gillespie dive in. Mandy Alonzo is also there, 91 in white for Virginia, and it's all right on top of that unofficial yellow line. If Finley recovered the ball, there's no way he could have leaned forward because he was already on the ground trying to catch the ball. Did maybe Gillespie comes in and catches it, so it's tough to tell from that angle. And but ex exactly what you said, Dave. Tough to tell. You need the video evidence to overturn it, and it must be indisputable. And again, the call on the field is first down NC State on fourth and short. And I'm not sure they're going to be able to see anything from that. It's yeah. going to tell them anything. It was fourth and less than a yard. What I'm looking for, for in, in the play is if is Finley on the ground when he when he re controls the football or does in fact Gillespie come in and catch it on the fly and go lean forward for the first down. We're not going to be able to tell. Very important decision here in the latter stages of this second quarter. The replay official is Larry Malum. He is in communication with Gary Patterson. It's not something NC State does a ton of. They get underneath and run the run game and, and some, but they are a shotgun pistol team. And it looked like Finley had a problem with the snap right off the start. It's only the fourth time this season they have gone for it on fourth down. So again the situation was fourth and short. Finley tried to sneak it lost the handle ball popped up into the air. And where was it recovered for NC State and right now that ball is spotted at the 15. Well, Based on their they have the same looks that we've shown you and based on what we've seen. I don't see anything there that can turn over what they've already called as a first down. I'm not sure why this is taking so long. Rocco Mendenhall for Virginia, Dave Doran for NC State in his sixth season. After review, it was determined that the ball carry fumbled the ball short of the line to gain. He recovered the same fumbler, recovered the ball beyond the line to gain, and that is a, that is a first down for North Carolina State. Well, obviously, the official on the far sideline who came in and marked it. Had a good angle and a look at Finley as, uh, as to where he recovered the ball. I think the Bronco Mendenhall is incredulous that the ball went forward and he caught the ball going forward. I think that's going to be a tough uh, explanation to the Virginia head coach. An enormous break for the pack. Presence of mind by Finley to get back onto that football. And if I heard our referee. Correctly, and I think that I do. At first, Dave Finley was stopped short. Well, the ball was short, and then he caught the football in the air, and evidently caught it beyond the line. I, I didn't see that, but regardless, NC State first down. Now. Gary Patterson gave us the official word. Gillespie. Not a whole lot on the right side for Gillespie. Runs into Juan Thornhill. Now NC State what they're going to want to do is obviously they want to score a touchdown here Tom but they want to work clock as well. So they don't want to give Virginia another opportunity to touch the football. So this will be clock management and I would assume Finley now at some point is going to assume control of this drive and throw the football. He's got Kelvin Harmon at the bottom of the screen yeah, showing blitz zero coverage man to man on the outside with the two slot receivers. Harmon has two 100 yard receiving games this year floating it to the end zone and it's a touchdown. Carrie Angeline the sophomore pulls it in 14 yards and a pack TD. We talked to Eli Drinkowitz the offensive coordinator and asked about your tight end and Carrie Angeline says we've got it. He said we've got a couple things designed for him down in the scoring zone. And they came up with one right there. Outstanding catch with a well thrown ball by Finley with a player in his face. So get the first down on a, on a bit of a broken play, Tom. And then on the next play, you strike. Or two plays later, you strike with the throw. First catch of the season for Angeline. Became eligible to, eligible to play in this game and makes an impact. Angeline, Angeline going to run the little corner route. Zandier's in really good place as far as coverage goes, but the ball is just perfectly thrown. Drops it right over the shoulder. In fact, 
Engelein juggles the football. And the USC transfer finds a way to squeeze it with tight coverage. Another contested catch by NC State. This one for a touchdown. 14 yards. Finley to Angeline. Second TD pass of the game for Finley. He's up to 42 for his career and now seven for the season. Ryan Finley. Well, let's take a look at these steel tools of the game, and they belong to Ryan Finley. Well, he's got good size at 6'4", 212. Excellent arm strength. We've seen that already. He can throw the ball over the yard. He anticipates his throws extremely well, meaning he throws receivers open. He didn't throw it to him. He throws them into holes. He anticipates where his receivers are going, and he gets them the football on time. So anticipation, excellent. And then, of course, his knowledge of what they're doing. This is fourth year with Eli Drinkwitz. They were together at Boise State. Eli comes here as the O coordinator. Finley wants out of Boise State. He transfers here to North Carolina State, and it's a match made in heaven. That pass to Angeline was the only pass of the scoring drive for NC State as Tavares Kelly takes it up beyond the 35. Let's see what's coming up at halftime. Back to Katie and Tommy in our Charlotte studio. Thank you, Tom. Coming up at the Raycom Sports Halftime Report, it has been an absolute nightmare in Death Valley, and we're going to talk about it all. Yeah, with Trevor Lawrence out, the Clemson coaches will be scrambling to find a package for Chase Price, the new Clemson quarterback, on what he can do if he has to play in the second half. Four ACC games in action. We are going to have highlights from them all. Make sure you keep it locked right here. For now, though, Tom, Dave, back to you guys. Well, you heard Dabo Sweeney talk about it when we had the game, the first game of the year. He talked about how Chase Bryce, they'd be very comfortable with him being their starter. We have Bryce Perkins for Virginia getting away from some trouble beyond the 40 for Perkins. James Smith Williams on the tackle and five on a run by Perkins, the junior from Queen Creek, Arizona. Time out of the field taken by Virginia. 40 seconds to go in our second quarter. One left, Tom, after they had burned a timeout on defense. You remember that third and short, so one timeout now left after this one for Virginia. Affleck. Time to test your knowledge with today's Affleck game trivia. Dave, how many times has NC State won six or more ACC games in a season? We're back with the answer in just a moment. Now, well, they got, can they I give you one of them? Sure. All right. Last so year. Last year, they were six and two, <laughs> and they finished the season ranked 23rd as they won the Sun Bowl to close out the season in El Paso, Texas, against Arizona State. Now, full disclosure, you guys talked about this yesterday. I'm talking. You did. You talked. So you know the answer. I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer because I don't pay attention to you guys the day before the game. So, <laughs> or ever um, for that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I have a good guess. I'm going to say, say seven. You're in the ballpark, Dave okay. Archer, right. as usual. Former standout for the Atlanta Falcons and at Iowa State, Dave Archer. Joining me in the broadcast booth, Larissa Harris is on the sidelines. Was that picked off? At the 48 yard line, Nick McLeod stepping in the passing lane. He's got his first INT of the season. Well, it's tight coverage, but the throw is late. The excellent job by McLeod to trace the steps of the receiver on the out route, trying to get the ball to Dubois. But Percy Perkins holds it. He's got to get it out on time. He did not. That allowed McLeod to get his head around and make the play. But he's in really good position anyway. Ill advised to try to throw this ball out there. Excellent coverage by Nick McLeod. He had a big day a year ago in the Hyundai Sun Bowl. And an interception, seven tackles, has an interception today. Now you're full go. You've got a chance to steal a score here if you're NC State with the ball in your big time quarterback's hands with these receivers and attack down the field. Third interception of the season by Perkins and McLeod, the junior from Rock Hill, South Carolina, his first pick. Swinging it out to the left side, Gillespie. 45 and then down to the 43. Tim Harris on the tackle, six yards on the play, and the clock at 25 seconds. Timeout taken by the pack. Once again, our Aflac game trivia. Question again, how many times has NC State won six or more ACC games in a season? The answer is six. I missed. So close, Dave. Just a bit outside. 
63, 68, 73, 92, 94, and last year. Lou Holtz, the head coach of the team in 73 when they went 6 0 as ACC champs. Pretty good guy running the rock back for them back in that day. Remember that was, Tony? Test your knowledge again with next week's AFLAC game trivia day. A guy named Ted Brown running the football, one of the all time, at the all time leading rusher ACC wise, certainly here at NC State, a big time player. Went on to play for the Minnesota Vikings. Second and five with 25 seconds to go in our second quarter. A couple of TD passes from Ryan Finley of 16 and 14 yards. And Messi and Angeline have the TD catches, and this one is complete. Down to the 37 or so to C.J. Riley for six yards. Uh, good job. Remember, the timeout left in the pocket for Ryan Finley, so he's not doesn't necessarily have to throw the ball along the sideline. He'd like to keep that in his pocket, but he doesn't have to. Finley lets it go. Incomplete to Kelvin Harmon. I've been impressed with the corners for Virginia. Did an excellent job. They've, they've been in tight coverage all day. Bryce Hall there, number 34. We've seen it from Tim Harris. This is a challenge now. You've got big receivers. Now, these are big corners. You don't normally see guys 6'2 and 6'1 playing corner. But Bryce Hall 6'1, Tim Harris 6'2. So they match up favorably for Virginia in size against these big receivers for NC State. Second and ten for the pack, which has won its last two ACC openers. Last year at Florida State, two years ago at home, right here against Wake Forest. Finley angles to the left, 33-yard line. Zandir the tackle, four yards on the play, and a timeout taken by NC State. It is their last with seven seconds to go. Well, you take that time out. Obviously, you consider if you're Dave Dorn, I've got a I've got a veteran quarterback. Do I risk throwing the ball and being caught in bounds and not getting points? I think that he's going to push his field goal kicker onto the field here to take an opportunity here with seven seconds left. Well, Dave, keep in mind what a lead means to NC State, especially in the second half. Their defensive unit has not allowed an offensive touchdown in the second half this season, and only three total TDs. All year. Well, and I think points will be a premium because Virginia and NC State defensively are outstanding in the second half. Two of the best in the country at keeping people off the scoreboard. A perfect day for college football here in Raleigh. Next week, we're off to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for Syracuse and Pittsburgh. And they're going to give Finley a quick throw here because. Virginia playing way off. So if I'm Finley, I'm going to take a quick throw. In fact, I think he's changing the play to try to get the quick throw here. His nine of his last 12 pass attempts must get out of bounds if you're the NC State receiver. There it is. And they will get out of bounds at the 27 to Jacoby Myers. Three seconds on the clock, six yards on the play. I'm really surprised that Virginia, Virginia's done a nice job of taking away the downfield throw. A little surprised they gave away the quick, easy throw. To make this a little bit more comfortable. Now it moves from about a 50 yard attempt to 44 here. True freshman, freshman at kicking, Christopher Dunn. Dunn was three of three in field goal attempts against Marshall. He's already made one today. This is going to be close and good. Uh, Virginia, and Virginia was offside, so it was a free kick. Looked like Thornhill was offside, the edge rusher for Virginia. 44 yards on the connection by Dunn to add to his 34 yarder in the first quarter. That's the longest of the freshman's season. So NC State capitalizes on that turnover and the interception by Nick McLeod turns into three points, and the pack will go to the locker room up 20 to 7. Let's go down to Larisha. Hey, Coach, you guys are grinding out the yards, over 100 yards rushing, over 280 total offensive yards. Your thoughts on the movement? I'm really happy we're getting the run game going, something we've been working hard on, and Ricky Person sparked those guys, and Brady and Reggie. O-line's playing hard. It was great to get that turnover right there before the half on defense and get a field goal. It's got to execute. 
got to execute. Let's keep playing. And defensively, you guys have been able to contain Bryce Perkins. He's actually in the negatives for rushing yards. Your thoughts on the defense discipline? I'll be excited if it's that way at the end of the game. We got a lot of football left, and he's a good player. We got to finish. Thank you so much, Coach. So as you guys have heard, we know that NC State, their defense has shut out their opponents in the second half. Will they do that offense? Well, defensively, defensively rather, in the second half, that's to be determined. Right now, the Wolfpack, they lead 17-7 going into halftime. Katie? Larisha, thank you so much. And coach, man, the Wolfpack making you look smart. <laughs> Pre-game, you said watch out for that Wolfpack D, and essentially they have shut down the Cavs offense. You win championships on defense, and that's why I think Dave Doran recognized his defense. They came in the ninth scoring defense in the nation, but it's been the overall play of the defense. 126 total yards, only 21 yards rushing, six first downs, one of five on, thir one of five on third downs. So a complete dominant performance by the NC State defense. Yeah, and it has the Wolfpack up 20 to 7 at the half and it has been an absolute nightmare in Death Valley. The number three Clemson Tigers taking on Syracuse. Coach is going to break <laughs> it all down. All the highlights coming at you next. Stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back into the Raycom Sports Halftime Report. He's the coach Tommy Bowden. I'm Katie Witham. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to start with highlights from Chestnut Hill. Steve Adazio taking on his former team, the Temple Owls, for the first time since he left to be the head coach at Boston College. And A.J. Dillon back in the form we're used to seeing him in. ACC leading rusher A.J. Dillon, a 52-yard touchdown run, now has 25 carries for 146 yards, two touchdowns. As you can see, it is halftime there. Boston College up on Temple, 31 to 21. A.J. Dillon, two scores so far on the day. Well, over in Memorial Stadium, Clemson Tigers trying to rebound from that upset against Syracuse last year, but it has been an absolute nightmare for the Tigers, and this is why. Yeah, here you see Syracuse defensive back Evan Foster. A pretty vicious blow to the upper body. Looks like the shoulder head area. But again, Trevor Lawrence slow to get up. Get up. And here comes Chase, Chase Bryce. Bryce coming in. Quick to rip that penny off <laughs> and start to warm up on the sideline. There has been no official update out of Clemson about Trevor Lawrence. As of yet, it is the third quarter. They are behind Syracuse with the 16 to 7 lead and coach. This is the last thing that Dabo Sweeney wanted to see. Yeah, you know, what the Clemson coaches are doing scrambling right now to get a Chase Bryce package. Obviously, he's not as talented. You got to remember, he's the fifth team quarterback. You got Trevor Lawrence, Kelly Bryant, Hunter Johnson and Zarek Cooper. They're either gone or he was that far down. He was so he's going to be a limited a little bit because he doesn't have the experience. Got very little practice in the spring in the preseason because he was 15. So they're struggling to get a package together of what can he throw the best. The running game, Katie, won't be a problem. He can hand the yeah. ball off to ETN, but it's what he can do in the passing game uh, efficiently to help them move the ball. Yeah, well, and coming into this one, Chase Bryce had 25 snaps so far on the season. He was 5 for 8 for 37 yards, but Dabo Sweeney <laughs> did say he was Brett Farvish, so <laughs> I'm looking for big things. He's your starter now. You better say something good. <laughs> you gotta good. pump him up, right? You gotta pump him up. Well, one guy that's been pumping us up is Alamade Zacchaeus. He catches this one from Bryce Perkins, a 35-yarder. The Cavs trying to make up some ground, though, against NC State. We're going to break down some more highlights coming up next on the Halftime Report. Hey, everybody. Welcome back in. We have had a very good game in our Raycom Sports Game of the Week, the NC State Wolfpack hosting the Virginia Cavaliers. Let's get to the first half action right now. And, Coach, it was the Cavs who found the end zone, end zone first. Bryce Perkins here to Alameda Zacchaeus. The only good thing that's happened for Virginia today on, on offense is that 35-yard oh, touchdown Oh, you little strike. Debbie Downer. <laughs> yeah. You the only good thing? Well, here comes Ryan Finley. He's been good all year. 16 of 24 on the day so far. But here, Amika Amika. Easy 16 yard touchdown pass. At the break, it is 20 to 7. The Wolfpack on top of Virginia, and man, has their defense been good. Well, another game in action. Georgia Tech hosting Bowling Green down in Bobby Dodd Stadium. They are in the third quarter with nine and a half minutes to play, and as you can see, this one's pretty much been 
all Georgia Tech so far? Well, once they get the running, running game going, it's tough for anybody to stop them because the play action pass becomes a factor. But here, Daquan Marshall, anytime he gets over 100 yards, you yeah. can expect Georgia Tech to have success. Really well, five for six with 160 yards, that's a pretty good day for Taquan Marshall. Uh, you know who else has had a pretty good day? Ryan Finley. He has 180 yards and counting. Second half adjustments from Coach coming up after a quick word from our local ACC stations. Get in the game with the ACC Quarterback Challenge app presented by Coyote Tractor. You can test your skills, throw a pass, and compete as your favorite ACC team. You can see Coach and I had a ball today. Download it for free in the App Store. Coach still working on his skills, by the way. Well, NC State is up on Virginia Tech 20-7 to at the break. They're looking to make it a 4-0 start this season. We are back in Raleigh for third quarter action. It's all coming up next. All season long, 30 Seconds to Mars kicks off each Raycon Sports telecast with their song, Hail to the Victor, from their brand new album, America. The multi-platinum selling band includes brothers Jared and Shannon Leto. They've sold over 15 million albums, headlining sold out tours and festivals worldwide. We are honored to have them join us for our ACC football coverage each Saturday this fall. Hail to the Victor. 20 to 7 is the halftime lead here at Carter Finley Stadium with NC State out in front. Tom and Dave with you here at halftime. Virginia had a 7 3 lead day, but 17 straight points by the pack. Well, we talked so much about the two offenses and namely the two quarterbacks, but really the defenses have shown up. We had the turnover right before the end of the half with Nick McLeod, and both defensive lines have played extremely well. So it's been the defenses that have kind of been the, the, the really the star on display. Yeah, let's compare those two quarterbacks. We'll start with Ryan Finley, the third year starter, Dave. 180 yards through the air and a couple of TD passes. Well, we knew coming in he had the ability to make all the throws, and, and we also talked about this receiver core, the, the way they attack and go get the football. Amizi, Amezi in particular, the youngster made a couple of big plays. This is the one right before the end of the half. Uh, Angeline makes the great catch on the play, but Perkins has been a guy that needed to make plays, both throwing the football, and he's done some of that. His guys have made some catches as well. He was able to get the goal to Alameda Zacchaeus for the touchdown. But it was Perkins in the run game that they have not been able to get going. NC State has been able to take Perkins away and have been really been able to take the run game period away from UVA. All right, Dave, it is time for our principal financial second half game plan for the Cavs and Pack. So for Virginia, they need to get that run game going, and it might be the short passing game. They did have some success getting the ball in the perimeter, throwing the ball. That's an extension of the run game. For NC State, they want to continue to do what they're doing, keep the quarterback in the cage and trouble the Virginia quarterback. All right, let's go down to the sidelines and check in with Larisha Harris. Coach, you guys have 21 yards rushing. How do you get that run game going? Take advantage of what they're doing, which is uh, more box oriented. So it's still throwing to open up the pass game by the way they're currently playing. We got to throw and catch better. And defensively, how do you stop Brian Finley? It's really uh, making plays when we're in position. So we're uh, assignments are sound, but we're not making plays on the ball. Thank you so much, coach. Yeah, I think that's a great point. We talked about contested catch, Tom, and that's what Bronco's talking about. He's not. He's not uh, upset with the where where his guys are. It's just the fact that those 50 50 balls which they determine are 50 50 ball NC State coming up with the football more than their guys are. Virginia will get the ball to start the second half. Bambard to kick it away for NC State. This is Joe Reed at the one. Reed up past the 20 yard line 21 yards officially on the return by Reed. Talking Tom Tom had talked about these receivers coming up with catches and, and just watch the way these guys fight through the defender or fight off the defender to make catches. 
That was an outstanding play. Nelson was in perfect position. How about that one? Zandir is in perfect position. Just like Bronco Mendenhall talked about. Ben Angeline makes the catch for the touchdown. So ball's in position, but these receivers have gone and gotten the football. Now first catch of the season for Angeline, who became eligible last week against Marshall. And he's got the TD grab in the first half, one of two from Ryan Finley as the Cavs go to the ground for four yards. See the possessions for Virginia in the first half. Zacchaeus caught the one touchdown. The one that's kind of glaring is the two play drive at the end of the half and the interception. Really the only mistake Perkins has made forced the ball into coverage and it gave, it gave NC State an opportunity to put some points on the board. And third down conversions must stay on the field on third down and some of that has to do with the fact that they face some serious third down long situations. Nick McLeod had the interception late in the second quarter. Perkins escaping that pocket. Pulled down by the jersey. James Smith Williams. Just excellent coverage, Tom, by this NC State defense. They took away all the quick throws. This is a quick throw scenario. You see to the inside right there, no place to throw to ball the ball. And then finally, this NC State team is going to get after you. And Smith Williams, the pressure guy off the edge, forces Perkins out of the pocket and ultimately puts him on the ground. A loss of 10 in the second sack of the season for James Smith Williams, the junior from right here in Raleigh, North Carolina and Millbrook High School. And right back into third and long for Virginia. Just one for five in this situation in the game and Perkins running the football near the 25 comes up well short by at least five or six yards. He got 11 on the scramble. But when you when you go in at halftime, both these coaches went in and talked to their teams and said, OK, now let's establish some tempo in the second half. How do you do that offensively? You get some first downs, move the football defensively, force a three and out. Well, NC State win, wins the first one here, forces a three and out and is going to get Finley back on the field. We'll get started next week at noon with the ACC Blitz powered by the 2019 Ram 1500 Syracuse and Pittsburgh. Going head to head at Pittsburgh, playing Central Florida. And Syracuse trying to pull the upset today against the Clemson Tigers. Coleman with the punt. Fair catch indicated near the 25 and made successfully by Fair Thomas. 54 yards on that punt by Lester Coleman. To help people affected by Hurricane Florence, text Florence to 90999 to give $10 to the American Red Cross. Terms and conditions apply. Folks in the Carolinas still recovering. Hurricane Florence, but everybody coming together to support the citizens of the Carolinas and the team effort to get everybody back to normalcy after the effects of that hurricane. We saw last week the North Carolina players, Dave, loaded up a couple of truckloads of supplies, and all the folks here at NC State very supportive. Yeah, it was good to see Kevin Reddick, a former outstanding linebacker for North Carolina from New Bern. Uh, got some of his former teammates, a number of people, I think a number of people from across the state, even from outside the state, coming in and trying to help out. So we had to continue that, though. There's a long way to go, help those people recover. You know, they also collected supplies outside of Carter Finley Stadium today as folks coming into the game could make donations. Really is quite an effort across the states of North and South Carolina. Finley with all day back there has to get out of the pocket. Throwing on the run is Finley, and it is caught along the sideline. Kelvin Harmon. Dave, that's some freelancing by Finley. Well, a lot of time, and it looked like Virginia only comes with a three man pass rush. See, only three are rushing, so eight are in coverage. But if you give a quarterback this long to, to free up, and what happens is Kelvin Harmon finds a hole in that eight man zone. And Finley puts the ball on him too hard to cover that long. I don't care how many people you have in coverage. 29 yards on the fourth catch of the game by Kelvin Harmon as Gillespie follows his blockers to the right side for four yards. For more on Kelvin Harmon, down to the sidelines on Larisha. Well, guys, when we spoke to the coaches earlier uh, yesterday, they told us that Kelvin Harmon is actually the type of guy that is the first in the facility and the last to leave. You can always find him in the receiver's room watching film. He says, he told me rather, he likes to let his game speak for itself. Six foot three, 215 pounds. He's a guy that you're going to see playing at the next level. He is a big time player. 
You know, Justin with the right tackle left the game really late. And Tyrone Riley, number 55, has checked in at right tackle. Person. Short gain for Person. Kind of a, a strange substitution there, Tom, right at the end of the of kind of the play clock there as we take a look at NC State's possessions. Big one there at the end, the done 20, the done field goal at the end, the 44-yarder. Excellent kick, put him up 20 to 7, and that was after the turnover by Virginia. Dunn is two for two on field goal attempts. NC State is six of ten on third down. This is third and six. Approaching 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Finley. Harmon. Flag is out. Two flags. Boy, and no reason really for Bryce Hall to grab here on Harmon. He's in perfect position, but he grabs right at the last moment. And he's going to get called for P.I. Pass interference. Defense, number 34. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Harmon's first job here now is to try to get a jam and force, or I'm sorry, Hall to force Harmon wide. And he does that, but then grabs the left shoulder right at the end. I'm not sure the ball was even, was the ball catchable? I guess, well, it's out of bounds. Almost non catchable football there. But, but Bryce Hall done everything perfect except right at the end, reached up and grabbed the left shoulder of Kelvin Harmon. Harmon, who last season was a thousand yard receiver for this program. Twice this year, Harmon's gone over 100 yards receiving, including last week against Marshall, 150 yards receiving. Pitch wide side. Person. Snowden, the stop. That's One really, yard. really well played by Charles Snowden, the, the sophomore linebacker. This was a play that came in from the sideline. They checked to option to the wide side, and Snowden did a really good job of slow playing that and tackling it virtually for no gain. He's impressive, Tom. Long player, six foot seven, 225. I talked about linebacker of the week a week ago. Had an outstanding performance against Louisville. Had a sack and an interception, eight tackles. He's played good again today. And we showed him earlier in the game smashing the rock with the sledgehammer. Charles Smasher Snowden. This one to the end zone, a one-armed attempt by Harmon, and it's incomplete. Boy, what an effort by Kelvin Harmon. And really good coverage again by Bryce Hall. Look where Hall is. You have to put that ball on the money, drop it down the chimney stoop. Just not, a, not enough air under the ball here for Harmon. He almost reels it in anyway, but that's a bit an outstanding matchup between Harmon and Hall. Big corner against a big receiver. They've had a nice battle today. Incredible effort from Kelvin Harmon, the junior. Trying to reach out and take that one in. Third and nine. Inside of nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Finley looking right. Has a man inside the 15. Jacoby Myers in stride. And a first down, NC State. Well, Jermaine Crowell, who's been forced into action, really, because the Brenton Nelson injury is nowhere in the in the sight here. Excellent throw, slot route, slot receiver runs the out route with a clearing route outside and, and victimized Jermaine Crowell. First and ten now for NC State. Fourth catch on that previous play in the game for Myers. We'll go back to the ground and Gillespie. Determined running inside the 10, down to the 7. Six yards on the run. We go down to Larisha. Well, Virginia is currently missing a key guy on defense. We saw number 28, Brenton Nelson, go out in the second quarter of the first half. He's not back on the sideline. I'm still trying to find out more about his injury. I'll let you guys know shortly. Well, don't ever want to speculate, but it certainly seemed like he was a little woozy after a hit, so you can imagine what that potentially is, and, and they're going to error on the side of safety for Britton Nelson. And so Crowell will be that nickelback and he'll be important against this receiver core. Handoff. Gillespie inside the five. Gillespie may have an upper first and goal NC State and it looks like he does. Well, Gillespie 
We talked about the outstanding backs they've here had here in the bat in the past, and Gillespie does a nice job of powering inside. 235 pound running back, and once he gets that head of steam downhill, tough to bring down. Three for three in the red zone today for NC State. Couple of TDs and a field goal. Trying to cash it in again. Right side walking into the end zone. It's Reggie Gillespie for the pack. Uh, Gillespie came in with four rushing touchdowns. Add another one to the total here. Outstanding job up front. Again, NC State playing on Virginia's side of the line of scrimmage. And when you get Gillespie going downhill at 235 pounds, he's going to run through the arm tackles, and he did it there. Dave, how about 24 unanswered points by the pack? Well, two teams come into with high aspirations, but NC State has seized control. ACC football is brought to you by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. By your local Chevy dealers. By Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. And by Food Lion, raising standards without raising prices. How refreshing. One of the absolute cathedrals of college basketball, Reynolds Coliseum, the first home of the ACC tournament. Saw the statues around the facility. Jim Valvano, national champs. Everett Case, Kay Yao, the legendary women's basketball coach. A lot of history on this Raleigh campus here at NC State. Joe Reed from the goal line. Big collision past the 15. Isaac Duffy made the hit on special teams. Tom, NC State defense has been the story today. They've done an outstanding job against the run game. Ellis can't get anything going. They tackled him in the backfield. Then Perkins, when he's tried to carry the ball, they have trapped him to the inside. Just no place to go. The run game non-existent for Virginia. And that's a big part of who they are coming in, controlling the clock, moving the ball on the ground. But NC State has completely shut the door in the run game. And look at Bryce Perkins in particular, averaging almost 80 yards a game on the ground, negative two so far. Virginia as a team, Dave, averages over 200 yards rushing per game. It has not materialized against this NC State defense as Perkins takes it to the right side. In fact, it's been NC State dominating the rushing game so far this afternoon. Well, we got a chance to talk with Coach Huxtable, Dave Huxtable, defensive coordinator. He talked about the importance of trying to kind of corral, if you will, Bryce Perkins and then subsequently their run game. Because Ellis is a big part of that as well. So it hasn't just been Perkins, it's been Ellis. They've taken away the run game. And you think about it, they've got a bunch of young guys up front. These are guys that had a little bit of play in time, but that was a vaunted defensive front a year ago that played most of the time. These guys have played in, at that standard. Second and four for the Cavaliers and Perkins. That pass is deflected and incomplete. It'll bring up third down. Isaiah Moore got a piece of that one. Chance to come in to watch NC State over the years, Tom, and their calling card is has always been defensive front and get after your passer. And right now, Bronco Mendenhall is going to need something special from his quarterback. They need to find a way to stay on the field here. I don't I think they can ill afford to put their defense back out on the field after giving up a touchdown on the last drive. Ellis is their leading rusher. He's got just 13 yards on the ground. Perkins trying to create, gets away from one man. Gets it away up near the 35 and what a grab. Assis Dubois, number eight, the junior, making the catch. Talked about something special out of Bryce Perkins, and that's exactly what they got. Outstanding job to avoid the pass rush right there. Holden wraps him up, but doesn't get him on the ground. Perkins stays alive and finds Dubois for the first down. That is exactly what they needed. They needed something special out of their, out of their special quarterback. And, and Perkins made one of those kind of plays that you look back on and you say, wow, that might have got us going. Fourth catch of the game by Hassis Dubois. That was for 11 yards and a first down. They try the other side of the field with Jordan Ellis. He goes out of bounds just beyond the line of scrimmage, maybe one or two. 
It will be classified as a run for Ellis. And one yard officially to match his jersey number. Really well played defensively there by NC State. Isaiah Moore, a freshman linebacker, getting wide. Here's our first and ten line day brought to you by Lending Tree, official loan shopping partner of the ACC. They have limited Ellis as well. He averages 112 yards per game on the ground. This is Zacchaeus to the pack side of the 50, and he runs out of bounds near the 40 yard line. Alamade Zacchaeus in a little misdirection. Holden forced him out after 25 yards on the gallop by Zacchaeus. Yeah, Robert and I going to reach into the bag of tricks here. Makes it look like uh, they faked fly sweep or jet sweep a number of times and have not given it to Zacchaeus. This time they hand it to him. NC State's been so stout in the middle. They have the ability to outflank them right there. Tried with the pass play to play before. This time it's the jet sweep that gets to the edge and Zacchaeus makes a play. Longest run of the game for Virginia, 25 yards from Zacchaeus. First and 10 Cavaliers driving the football. Perkins with the time over the middle caught inside the 10 as he hit Tavares Kelly. That pass on schedule for Bryce Perkins. Well, an excellent job of protection up front this time by for Perkins. He has a chance to sit in there and wait for this to happen. You see the pickup of Jermaine Pratt coming on the blitz, gives the quarterback an opportunity, and he shoots it right down the middle to his freshman, Kelly. Big time play there, and one that Virginia needed. Think about the third down scramble by, by Perkins to keep this drive alive, and all of a sudden the Cavs are threatening. 32 yards on the previous play into the red zone for the first time this afternoon for Virginia. Football at the seven. Initial hit near the five, Jordan Ellis. Andreas Bryant was the first one to create contact with the rusher, Jordan Ellis. Pack defense and has not allowed a second half offensive second half touchdown all year. Well, Virginia trying to put it into that, but Bryant made a nice play there to force second down deep in Wolfpack territory. Got to give Perkins a two way option, find a way to get him to the perimeter with a run pass option. Ellis going to be hitting the backfield. Now North Carolina just swarming the line of scrimmage with defenders. So you got to find a way to get to the perimeter. Look how many NC State defenders are in the picture. Just no place for the run game to go. They do an excellent job of keeping leverage on the runner. And now you forced a third down situation here. I would anticipate if, that they will spread the field some here and give Perkins an opportunity but they don't. They go with a little bit tighter package. Got to be Perkins on the perimeter. Last play was a loss of three, just two for seven on third down. Third and goal. Perkins, extended period in the pocket. Now flushed out of there. Perkins throws back into the end zone, and it's caught. Alamade Zacchaeus on third and goal, nine yards, and his second TD catch of the game for the Cavs. Three-man pass rush by NC State allows Perkins to sit in the pocket and then ultimately get out of the pocket to create. Only three men coming. He waits, waits. Now he's going to float to his left. And that's when, that's when coverage breaks down. Zacchaeus, the veteran, the senior, finds a hole. And Perkins puts on. So two third-down scrambles by Perkins. They needed something special from the quarterback, and he got it done. I need my superstars to step up and make a play. It's Perkins to Zacchaeus for Virginia. Twenty-seven, fourteen, NC State with the lead after that touchdown pass to Zacchaeus, nine yards, and his second TD grab of the game from Bryce Perkins, who now has eleven TD tosses on the season. First touchdown allowed by the defensive unit in the second half of any game this season by NC State playing its fourth game of the year. Their game against West Virginia was postponed officially earlier this year because of Hurricane Florence as that goes through the end zone. 
What a response by Virginia to stay within striking distance. We'll step aside for just a moment and be back after a word from your local ACC station. Three eleven to go in the third quarter. Alameda Zacchaeus with the catch of the end zone from Bryce Perkins to make it twenty seven fourteen. A good job of staying alive for his quarterback by Alameda Zacchaeus because it was really Perkins who created the play. Did it twice in that drive, one deep in his own territory and then one for the touchdown. NC State came into the afternoon second to last in rushing in the conference. They've run for 126 yards in the game. That pass is complete. Thayer Thomas has it. From Ryan Finley for nine yards on first down. And good recognition by the freshman to find a little hole and set it down as Perkins, or I'm sorry, as, as Finley rolled to his right. And he found Thayer Thomas. Asked Finley about his receivers. He says he trusts all of them. He says all of them make plays for him. From the 35 for the pack. Teams have not met since 2012, and that was a win for Virginia right here at Carter Finley Stadium, 33 to 6. Person should have enough for a first down just beyond the 35 yard line. Flag is out, tail end of the play after the whistle. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Number 33, defense, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Sam Deere on the flag. Let's look at the NC State run of the football. Got it going right near the end of the half. And it was Ricky Person, the freshman, got it going. They ran five consecutive times, and ultimately were able to power it in. But uh, and then Galas continued it into the second half with Galaski's rushing touchdown. We saw just a few moments ago. Ricky Person, the the talented freshman, the highly recruited freshman in the game. If you look at the Wolfpack rushing attack, came in averaging just 107 yards on the ground, and already passed that. Nine rushes for 69 yards for Person prior to that carry. And maybe one. Darius Bratton on the tackle. Sophomore from Roanoke, Virginia. NC State playing at a little bit slower pace now. Willing to try to keep that Virginia defense on the field with the right play in the game. Pound them a little bit with the run game. Teams have split the last six meetings. Three wins apiece. Thomas. Blunt on the tackle, loss of three. Well, it's a good play by Joey Blunt, too. He reads this right away and comes up and makes the tackle for no gain. That's an excellent job of forcing third and long by Joey Blunt. Trying to get the ball in the, in the Flat real quickly, but Blunt was having none of it. Kicking down to a minute to go in the third. Third and long. And soft corners on both sides. Seven of 11 on third down. And that one sails out of bounds. Looking for Thayer Thomas. It is fourth down as Juan Thornhill hustled back in coverage for the Cavs. Yeah, got a little pressure. From Falmui, which pushed the quarterback off his spot a little bit, but a good job of being on coverage. Thornhill, safety, guarding that slaughter. We talked about how Thornhill's a played corner, started 12 games at corner a year ago, so he's very comfortable playing man to man. So Finley misfires on third down. AJ Cole to punt. Chuck Davis at his own 10 for the Cavs. They'll get the ball back. The 11, Davis. Spun out of a tackle and up to the 18. 40 yards on the punt, seven on the return from Davis. And Steph Lewis has the tackle on special teams. Well, Alameda Zacchaeus is a senior. He realizes he's got a quarterback that's in a little bit of trouble. He's down here at the bottom, and he's going to find a way to stay alive for his quarterback. He's on the shallow cross route, but he realizes uh, Perkins is out of the pocket now. So now he's got to find a hole, and he sits it down in the middle of the NC State defense. He realizes he's uncovered as defenders try to rally up to make the play against Perkins. Excellent job of Perkins staying alive as a passer, but a great job by Zacchaeus to find an area a quarterback could get him the ball. 40 seconds on the clock of the third. Perkins pass. Joe Reed 
Tackle will be on the 30 yard line. First down, and we're going to Charlotte for an update. Let's head to Memorial Stadium. And, coach, this is not the way you want to end the third quarter. Amari Rogers, the Clemson returner, takes his eyes off the football. Syracuse recovers and confirms with Eric Dungey on a two yard plunge giving the Syracuse a lead. And since that, Clemson just scored. They're waiting to take the extra point. 23-19, orange on top. Wow, what a battle. Syracuse 4-0 for the first time since 1991. Can they stay that way against the three-time defending champs in the ACC, the Clemson Tigers? Zacchaeus got eight on the catch. Ingle made the tackle, and that will end the third period. Well, Virginia gave up an early score here in the second half, but they've answered, and we've got a battle headed to the fourth quarter here at Carter Finley. Our third quarter stats are brought to you by the North Carolina Education Lottery, celebrating 12 years and over $5.8 billion raised for education. To learn more, visit nclottery.com. Well, important that Virginia now get something out of this offensive drive. Tom did a nice job of answering the NC State score with one of their own, but you look at the plays, that's going to start adding up for this Virginia defense. It's not the coolest day down on the field, even though we're starting to get to the, that time of the year. It's still pretty warm down on the field here at Carter Finley, so they need to keep that defense over on the sidelines as much as they can. Bright sunshine and temps in the high 70s. Perkins delivers, took a lick, but that one complete to Tavares Kelly. Perkins got hit after the release, 17 yards. How impressive has this kid been now? Play fake, going to take a shot, knows it's coming, stands in. Got Rose, Roseboro coming on the, on the rush from the left side. Pinpoint throw to his freshman for a first down. Six completions in a row for Perkins. Getting closer to 200 yards passing for Perkins. First and 10. The impact territory. Perkins pass near the 30. Taken in by Dubois. And then he got down to the 27 or so. 16 yards. Back to back completions. And the fifth catch of the game for Hassis Dubois. A good quick read and a contested catch by Dubois. And all of a sudden, here comes Virginia. Executing at a high level on offense after struggling to control the line of scrimmage. Now giving their passer time to make some plays. Timeout on the field for Nick McLeod. Who was the player down for NC State? He had the interception of the second quarter. So while the training staff attends to McLeod, we'll take a timeout here in Raleigh. ACC football is brought to you by Bojangles. It's bow time by Ram. By CPI Security, official security partner of the ACC. By Bass Pro Shops. And by Geico, saving people money for over 75 years. That is the Wolfpack Turf statue. Six bronze wolves guarding the entrance to NC State football. Defense trying to guard the entrance to the end zone as Virginia continues to roll here on Raycom Sports. Perkins in the second half, seven of eight through the air. He's got 212 yards passing and two TDs thrown for Perkins in the game. Going to have to improvise. Tuck and run. Sliding down at the 20 yard line. They'll mark him at the 21 officially on the run from Perkins for six yards as Jermaine Pratt forced him to the turf. Now we've seen him get out of the pocket and buy time, but we have not seen him get up the field. NC State's done a good job. We talked about one of the keys to the game, or the key to the game for them was to keep him in the cage, and they've done a pretty good job of that for the most part. But this time he gets one of those impromptu runs that puts him in a really good down and distance situation. Just 61 yards total, though, rushing for Virginia in the game. NC State has 129. Looking for some razzle-dazzle. Perkins trying to get away, throws it. Incomplete. Forward pass from Perkins. Crowd reacts. 
thinking maybe he got close to the line of scrimmage Dave. Well, let's take a look at this. They fake the the reverse. Excellent job of staying at home. That's the freshman Ingle. Certainly the ball's going forward. There's no question about the ball going forward. Perkins understood where he was. If he was able to get this ball outside, he got a chance for a big play here. But nice play by Tanner Ingle, who was beaten earlier for a touchdown. The freshman right there, number 10, makes a big time play on the elusive target in the out in the open space. Three for eight in the game on third down for the Cavs. Roadblock at the 20 for Jordan Ellis. Nothing on the play. Fourth down. Yeah, freshman Isaiah Moore, the linebacker, steps in and makes the play. 6'2, 233 pounder. Did an excellent job of stepping in. Number 41 going to beat the blocks. He beats the tackle's block, steps inside, and makes the play. Cavaliers and Bronco Mendenhall lead the offense on the field from the 21 yard line. Fourth and four. One for one on fourth down of the game for Virginia. Perkins. Too far for the intended receiver, Tavares Kelly. Boy, he made a good read, Tom. He's got an opportunity to get Kelly the football on the corner route, and he just was too tall with the throw. Excellent protection up front, and a great job by the defense to rise up. Got to find a way to get a stop. They found a way to get it done. NC State with the ball when we come back. Here's our Yellowwood brand top recruit. It is Mario Williams out of Richlands High School towards the Carolina Coast. Boy, they had two outstanding defensive ends. Manny Lawson on one side and Mario Williams on the other side. He was a big timer here at NC State. Went number one overall in the draft. And had an outstanding career as an NFL football player. But uh, Mario Williams was a monster. We start talking about a monster on the defensive end spot. Four time all pro as we go old school for our Yellowwood brand top recruit Mario Williams who is the ACC legend for NC State this year. Gillespie tried to bounce it outside cut down at the 24 yard line he got three. Well, when Tom when you talk about the legends they were announced this week. This is a who's who list Steve Spurrier Bobby Bowden Ed Reed Brian Dawkins who just went in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. How about Herman Moore from these Virginia Cavaliers Josh Nesbitt the outstanding Georgia Tech quarterback. I mean it is a who's who this year. Mario Williams was uh, obviously a part of that but uh, just an amazing group of legends this year. Maybe the best of all time. I don't know. I mean anytime you throw those guys at legends they're all great but this is a heck of a group. The last be unable to turn the corner. Don't forget Don McPherson from Syracuse as well, Dave. Sure, absolutely. That'll be Friday night before the ACC championship game, and that takes us right to this. Exclusive tickets to the 2018 Dr. Pepper. ACC football championship game are on sale now. Purchase a four-pack and receive five, or four rather, four $5 Bojangles gift cards and four ACC hats. Reserve your four-pack today. Also enter to win a luxury suite for 10 at the ACC.com slash Sweet Life. Bank of America Stadium, Dave, eighth time that Charlotte will host that title game. Uh, it's become a weekend, uh, a, a getaway, if you will. you got to go in for all three days because everything is great there. And so. This pass up to the 35 and a first down. Kelvin Harmon pulls it in. 12 yards for Harmon on the reception. Again, he's got five. Again, understanding of what's going on from a coverage standpoint. You see the hole. Look at Harmon settle in that hole, give his numbers to the quarterback, present himself to his quarterback, and Finley on the same page, and you extend the drive. Get him really play. You're going to see him catching him on Sundays. Inside of 11 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And again, Finley willing, they're willing to work. Uh, Coach Drinkowitz calling the plays, willing to work at a, a pace that's going to eat some clock here. Breaking through the line, Gillespie, eight yards, blunt on the tackle. A lot of defenders around the line of scrimmage, so if you can crease the line of scrimmage, there's a chance for a big play here. 
Good job up front again playing on Virginia's side of the line of scrimmage and Gillespie Priest is really a pretty good tackle by Blunt because he just saved the touchdown. Now 142 yards rushing as a team for NC State. A team that has rushed for more yards in this series has won 11 of the last 13 meetings between the Pack and the Cavs. And that was the drum Dave Dorn was beating on when we get a chance to talk to him. We've got to be better in the run game, and they've done that today. Pitch from Finley, and this one will be negative yardage to Ricky Person. Dave, that's Juan Thornhill, the senior. Yeah, the leading tackler on this team, and this is a poor job by Finley running the option. You have to attack the defender, attack his inside shoulder. See, he never gets into the defender, pushes the ball out too soon to Person, so Thornhill can play the running back and the quarterback at the same time. And Thornhill, they say, one of the smarter players they've had around here, and he's falling in the footsteps of Quinn Blanding, one of the great safeties in ACC history. Thornhill stepping into the, that area, and He's an excellent job on that play. Landing first in school history with 495 career tackles. They lost nine on the previous play. Trying to get it back here. It's going to be a flag and potential pass interference. C.J. Riley was the intended target. That's Bratton who may have committed the contact. Yeah, got there too early, Tom. He's in good position. Pass interference. Defense, number 32. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Some of this is forced by the receivers at NC State. They make so many catches, you feel like you've got to be on them. And I don't think there's any question. I saw it, seeing it by the naked eye. It's hard to see it there. I thought that he bangs into the back. Yeah, well before the ball ever gets there. That's a good call by the official. Bratton hoping against hope that they didn't see the chest into the back, but they did. First and 10 from the 49. Person cuts the angle off and goes up the middle to the 45 yard line. Inside the 45, seven yards on the run. As Snyder had the tackle for Virginia. Now we talked a little bit about Ricky Person so far in the game. He's the guy that kind of kick started the run game. Now obviously, the offensive line had to get some blocks, but Person, the, re the true freshman, 6'1, 210 pounds out of Wake Forest, North Carolina, Heritage High School. Had an unbelievable senior year, over 2,200 yards rushing, 38 touchdowns, and they had hoped that he was going to blossom into that guy that was going to be that big play guy for him. And he's kind of put in a workhorse performance today. Trying to add to the total is Person. Makes the move at the 25, and Person tracked down near the five-yard line by Charles Snowden, who saved the touchdown. It's the freshman, Ricky Person, on the run. A coming out party for Ricky Person. Now he's getting help up front. North Carolina State doing a good job of blocking at the point of attack. But once Person gets in the secondary, he's got some elusiveness to him at the point of attack. But once Person gets in the secondary, he's got some elusiveness to him. And Snowden saves a touchdown. And goal, NC State will pack as we the payoff right here. Four for four in the red zone for NC State. Open field tackle made as a flag comes out. Snyder made the tackle on person. Holding number 70. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. Aaron Prescott, the left guard, gets signal for the foul. This is its 19th start in that Wolfpack offensive line. And they, Tom, we saw it at the end of the first half, really began to take control of the line of scrimmage with the run game, and it's it's now really paid dividends here in the second half. And I think some of it has to do with Virginia's uh, defense has played a number of snaps. Four for four in the red zone today for NC State. Three TDs and a field goal. Towards the end zone. Front corner. Adjusting to the ball and a touchdown. Kelvin Harmon for the Wolfpack. 16 yards from Ryan Finley for the score. Well, Tom, when we get a chance to show this back, I want you to see ball placement here. Watch where the ball is put by Finley. DB's in good position. That is the... 
epitome of a back shoulder fade throw by Finley. It's something they work on all the time. They talk to him. You throw the ball all around the body. His receivers expect it. And now they'll go for two. But what a throw by Finley. And Harmon expecting the ball to be there. Pack will go for two, up 33-14. Finley rifles to the end zone, and it's caught. Omeka, Imezi, two-point conversion for NC State. NC State, five for five in the red zone. And this one is the last one. Harmon, the big-timer, makes a play. Five, 14. Two point conversion to Imezi to create that difference. Here in the fourth, Kelvin Harmon had the TD catch his first of the season. Now Ryan Finley has three TD passes in our game of 16 14, and again 16 yards here in the fourth. Just so impressed with this receiver core here for NC State. Dave, you mentioned it on the way out. Five for five in the red zone and four touchdowns. Virginia had only allowed two TDs in the red zone all season. Four for NC State today. There will be no return. Next Saturday, tune in at noon Eastern for the ACC Blitz, powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500, followed by our game of the week, Syracuse at Pittsburgh. Yeah, this was a high-scoring affair last time we got a chance to get together with them in Pittsburgh. Highest-scoring game in college football history. Touchdown after touchdown. Tom was so tired after this game, we had to carry him out of the booth. How many ways can you say touchdown differently? I tried. There were 20 touchdowns in that game. Amba Adetawo had five touchdowns by himself, the Syracuse receiver. There were zero field goals attempted in the game. Perkins out of that pocket. Nowhere to go for Perkins. Well, Runs into Pratt. Yeah, good job by NC State now because if he escapes the pocket, it's man coverage down the field. There's going to be a lot of running room, but Jermaine Pratt does not allow that to happen. Captain on that defense, guy's been waiting his turn to be on the field. 43 games for Pratt as a Wolfpack member. Wants to throw, pressure right up the middle. Pass is complete on a line to Jana. Perkins slow to get up off the turf after an 11 yard completion and a flag as well. Looks like a personal foul coming up against NC State. 15 yard penalty, automatic, first down. They're going to rough the passer here. This is something Perkins has done all day long is stand in there, and that's what they want to try to eliminate is taking him and driving him into the ground. Something that we've seen a lot in the NFL. That rule doesn't necessarily exist here in, in college, but they are looking for if it's extended hit on the quarterback, which that was. Didn't really need to continue to drive him into the ground, so that's a legitimate call. That's a Seuss who made the play on Perkins. They will step off the personal foul and take that football into NC State territory with 6:40 and rolling here in the fourth quarter. So glad that you have joined us on Raycom Sports. Another completion inside the 40 for Perkins. He's able to hit Tavares Kelly for eight yards. A sense of urgency now for Perkins. He has to go fast. Perkins, who threw for 379 yards, a career high against Ohio in the win against the Bobcats. They've won yes. two in a row, beat Louisville last week as well. Spending way too much time diagnosing the zone look. Perkins on the move, directing traffic. Perkins sliding at the 25. And he got out of the pocket. That's, you've seen it a couple times in the last two drives for Virginia as Perkins has been able to skate out of the pocket and been able to hit it up the field. It's something they have not allowed him to do much of today. And he's done a good job throwing the ball from the pocket when he's had the opportunity, when he's been protected enough to where he could get it out. 11 yards. On that run for Perkins and a first down at the 28 of NC State. Quick flip. Zacchaeus put on the brakes. 
But then could not get away from number 28 to Sean Miller. Five yards on the play. Boy, you can see how quick Zacchaeus is. Miller makes his tackle. It's not even his guy. He's guarding the outside player. And when Zacchaeus puts his foot in the ground, Miller has to make the tackle because Zacchaeus is going to be off to the races. Seven catches in the game for 92 yards. Alameda Zacchaeus, the Virginia senior. Another pass complete at the 20. That was Tanner Engel coming up to make the tackle of Zacchaeus. He got four yards. Eighth catch of the game for Zacchaeus now. Virginia would like to go a little bit quicker than they are, Tom. This is a little bit plodding in my mind with down 21 points here, but they're trying to maximize this drive. Three of nine on third down. It's third and one. Inside of four and a half minutes to go. Perkins surveys the landscape. That ball deflected as pressure was on him. And once again, he went down thanks to Lurel Murchison. Yeah, relentless pass rush too because because Perkins initially makes Murchison miss. He's going to make Murchison miss the first time right there that steps around and Murchison stays after him and is able to hit him just as the ball is getting released. So fourth down Virginia forced to go for it. They are one for two on fourth down in the ball game. Uh, it's been about Perkins and that's who if NC State's going to defend this has got to pay attention to number three from just inside the 20 Ellis couldn't get away from that tackle by Moorhead or else he might have been able to make his way to the goal line eight yards for Jordan Ellis maybe the best run Ellis has had today right through the middle of the NC State defense and gets the first down but again working at a plow in the ground play pace right here is Virginia keep an eye on that clock now inside of four minutes to go in regulation from the 12 Perkins scurries around and falls at the 21 Murchison bearing down on him along with Andreas Bryant well, that defensive front has a huge standard to live up to and, and they've done it today I think they've done a nice job of creating some problems for Perkins up front, certainly for the, the offensive line. Timeout taken by Virginia, and we'll be back after a word from your local ACC station. Here's a look at our Toyota game summary for summaries of other ACC games. Go to Toyota Game Center at the ACC.com. You take a look at it, Tom. Both quarterbacks have played at a high level. Uh, maybe the conversions in the red zone when you look at NC State's performance, five for five in the red zone. Zacchaeus has made plays. I think it's probably the inability of Virginia to run the ball with any effectiveness is probably the one thing that's been skewed from these two offenses because both have performed at a pretty well, pretty high level. Ryan Finley had passed for 300 or more yards in each of the first three games so far this season for NC State. Tenth play of the drive. Perkins pass near the 10. Good hands and the catch. Zacchaeus. Again, good protection, Tom. Allows Perkins to wait for Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is in the slot to his left. Going to come all the way across the field. And the only late pressure and allows Perkins to sort it out and get, get the ball to his best receiver. 110 yards receiving for Zacchaeus with nine receptions. Ellis, pathway to the goal line. Jordan Ellis is in for the score for Virginia. Well, excellent job of Virginia fighting their way, trying to get back down and get in the end zone against this really good NC State defense, but got some good blocks at the point of attack. And then Ellis does a nice job of creating at the back end of the run realizing the importance of getting in on that play to save as much time as he could. An 11 play drive capped by the Ellis TD run from six yards out. His sixth rushing touchdown of the season. 35 20 308 to go after the Virginia score. To help people affected by Hurricane Florence text Florence to 90999 to give ten dollars to the American Red Cross terms and conditions apply. Let's go to Charlotte. Check in with Katie and Tommy. 
Thanks, Tom. Let's head to Clemson. Trevor Lawrence left in the second quarter. This is fourth down, and Chase Bryce, he pulls it off. Uh, with ice water in his veins, hits T. Higgins to convert the fourth down, then sets up Travis Etienne with a two-yard touchdown run, his third touchdown of the day. Etienne has 203 rushing yards. Clemson regains the lead 27-23. Clemson, you, you got to find a way to win games, right? That one's not completely over now. This game is with uh, Syracuse with the ball deep in their own territory, but a valiant effort by the Orange to go in and try to create another upset, upset opportunity. Beat Syracuse, Syracuse beat Clemson a year ago. Thank you for performance by Dino Baber's crew. So with 3.08 to go, Potential onside kick for Virginia. They try the other side. They got the bounce. And they got the ball. That's Dubois. Dubois. Yes, Dave. Yeah, Dubois, the wide receiver, went up like he was making a catch from Perkins right here. Excellent job of kind of faking out. You see, all of a sudden it comes from the other side, and Dubois, number eight, just going to step right in and caught that side of the return unit for NC State sleeping. And a nice play by Dubois now. He gives Virginia another opportunity. Now the sense of urgency for Virginia has got to be much more acute than it was on that last drive. They had to get that last score to give themselves an opportunity to get the ball back, but now it's got to be, they got to be an overdrive on offense. That was Delaney who kicked that perfect onside kick. And Dubois was able to come up with it. Perkins is taking off. Out of that pocket, 40 yard line and more. Perkins down the sidelines and inside the 30. They'll mark him out right at the 30 yard line. And it's a 20 yard run for Bryce Perkins. Well, it's a designed run, Tom, and they're going to pick up the blitz through the middle. You see the block on Pratt, number three. And Perkins is right in behind that block. So a designed run for Bryce Perkins. And all of a sudden, here's Virginia inside the NC State 30. Two forty five to go on the fourth pressure on Perkins. He's dragged down Murchison third sack of the game for the Wolfpack and his second. Again Murchison is one of those big bodies in the middle that just kind of relentlessly keeps coming at you a little bit of a bull rush holding off. The left tackle Ryan Nelson with his left arm while he gets in to make the tackle on the elusive Bryce Perkins. A loss of seven yards on the play by Murchison, the junior from Elizabethtown, North Carolina. Our coverage of ACC football being broadcast on AFN, the American Forces Network. We welcome the men and women of the U.S. Army, Air Force, Navy, Coast Guard, and Marines stationed around the world. So proud to have you with us, and we hope you have enjoyed our broadcast today from Raleigh, North Carolina, and the campus of NC State. Tom Wormy, Dave Archer, Larisha Harris, and our outstanding Raycom ACC football production crew with you from Raleigh. Well, we've already seen here early in the year how crazy it potentially is going to be in the ACC. We saw Syracuse go down and give Clemson all they wanted. Syracuse ends up finding a way, or Clemson finds a way to win the football game. But here, these two teams are going to give a number of teams problems throughout the year as well. 27-23 is the final from Death Valley as the Tigers avenge the loss from last year against the Syracuse Orange. We will see Syracuse next week as they go on the road against the Pittsburgh Panthers on our Raycom ACC football game of the week. This is Ellis stutter stepping his way inside the 35 yard line for three. Not sure they have enough time to do that Tom. run the football I think that if you're going to run it, it's got to be the quarterback creating off of his ability to, to throw it he's needing a lot of time here if NC State can hold on here Dave up by 15 with just over two minutes to go they will improve their record to 4 and 0 and be 1 and 0 in conference play. There's movement on that Virginia line and some confusion. Well, the problem is, Tom, number is 77, offense, five yard penalty, third down. This offensive line realizes they are in a situation where time is a premium. 
And Bryce Perkins trying to figure out a two man up look from NC State, but thinking that maybe he was going to get some pressure and they're just taking too long to sort it out. And if you get a guy like Feeler, it's 320 pounds. It's going to be hard to stay in your stance that long. Dave Dorn's in his sixth year of Virginia, the only team he had not faced as the head coach of the pack. The integrity of that pocket is compromised by Murchison and friends. Sack number four. And you say defensive lineman of the week in the ACC? How about Murchison? He has been a monster here in the fourth quarter. Laurel Mon uh, Murchison. Three sacks on the day for Murchison. I think he pretty much has sealed that up. Four for the team, three for number 92. And the studs on the defensive line continue to perform for NC State. Here's our performance of the game. It's brought to you by your local Chevy dealers. Well, Ricky per Person, they needed someone to step up in the run game, and the freshman did it. 14 carries, 108 yards. And he came on big late in the first half, and then he's been huge here in the second half. Did an outstanding job. A guy they've been waiting to kind of step into his own, and it looks like maybe we have seen the breakout performance from Ricky Person. His 108 yards today, the most by any NC State running back this season after Gillespie last week against Marshall had run for 81 yards and two touchdowns. And the freshman and his teammates are closing in on victory. Fourth and 22, 146 remaining on the clock. And it's a 15 point lead for the pack. Perkins Face taken pass. down. There are two, three flags out. It was holding on the play, Dave, but as you said. Personal foul. Face mask. Number 55. Defense. Automatic first down. Penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Yeah, that's the part that, that gets you. Now, this is a three man pass rush again. Holden does an excellent job of fighting through and getting there, but then grabs Bryce Perkins' face mask and actually whirly birds him around. I think that's uh, that would be the definition of a face mask. Maybe lucky he didn't get a personal foul on top of it, but uh, the automatic first down, huge. And the only reason the Cavs have the football right now is because they recovered the onside kick after Ellis has scored the rushing touchdown. They're going to the end zone trying to run under it, but too far for Hassis Dubois, who ran out of real estate in the back left corner, running with Chris Ingram. So NC State will now have. Wins this season against James Madison, Georgia State, Marshall, and Virginia if this score holds. And here's the coming schedule, Dave. Boston College comes here to Carter Finley, and then a couple of tough games on the road now. That Syracuse game looks even tougher now as you look at it with their performance against Clemson. The Orange coming up just a little bit short in their bid to upset the Tigers for the second straight year. This pass down by the 5 2 Zacchaeus is knocked down to the turf. Jarius Moorhead. Who had quite a game against Marshall. He returned an interception for 57 yards for a touchdown in the win against Marshall. Virginia's schedule, as you look at what they've got coming up, they get uh, Miami and Charlottesville, Duke in Charlottesville, and then, uh, or I'm sorry, they get Duke in Durham, and then have uh, North Carolina come in the, uh, the classic battle, the oldest Southern college football rivalry in North Carolina, Virginia, week three. Miami, yep, Miami posting a win against North Carolina at home on Thursday over the middle incomplete. Virginia Tech and Duke will play tonight in Durham. Zacchaeus couldn't grab that one. Something that uh, Bryce Perkins has lived with most of the day is he wasn't going to have a lot of time. And again, it's Murchison coming through the middle. And Perkins has had to get the ball. Perkins has had to get the ball out. This will be the fourth time in the game that Virginia goes for it on fourth down. They're two for three. Fourth and ten for the Cavaliers. From the 27 of NC State. Perkins. Pass for Zacchaeus, who got tangled up with the defender. Tanner Engel, and here comes the flag. Yeah, what you look for now here, does he impede Zacchaeus' ability to come back to the ball? Because he's in good position. 
Pass interference. Number 10. Defense. 15 yard penalty. Either spot. Automatic. First down. Yeah, because the ball is a little bit underthrown and because. Engel's not going to turn and find the football. He's going to impede Zacchaeus' ability to come back for the ball. He just can't keep he, he, trying to gear down, and that right arm prevents Zacchaeus from coming back. And I think it's a legitimate call. Tough one, though, for the defender because, you know, you're running after arguably the most dangerous player on the field for Virginia. Perkins to his left, the throw made. Dubois grabbed it and went out of bounds. Five yards on the play. Perkins took a big hit at the back end of that. Perkins has showed his toughness today, no question about that. He team. really has, Tom. I, I, I'm so impressed with this kid. He's going to win a lot of games for Virginia this year. Sixth catch of the game by Hassis Dubois, junior from Irvington, New Jersey. 66 yards. All those passes from Bryce Perkins. He has a couple of TD passes of 35 and 9 yards in the game. He's got 11 TD passes for the season. Deflected and intercepted at the three. NC State has the pick. It's Dexter Wright on the deflection. Well, and it's great recognition by Wright, too. He's a senior, played a lot of football. He realizes, okay, I'm going to elevate right here. He's going to try to throw that quick throw behind me. He's the one that bats it in the air and then comes up with it himself. So it's a it's an excellent play by a veteran player in right to make the play that seals it for NC State. Second interception of the game for the Wolfpack. Nick McLeod had one at the end of the second quarter. Turned into three points late. And then Dexter Wright, the interception of Bryce Perkins. Four interceptions on the season now for Perkins. And now with 106 to go, just a couple of snaps away for NC State from going 4-0, 1-0 in conference play, and 3-0 here at Carter Finley Stadium. Impressive performance by NC State and their wide receiver core. Certainly Finley distributing the ball. We talked about them. Here's our pass catch of the game. The last touchdown. Outstanding throw on the back shoulder, but you have to make the catch once it's there. And we talked about Harmon off the top. This guy is a big time player. Six foot three, 215 pound wide receiver that is going to be a nightmare for defensive backs all year. Six catches, 94 yards and a touchdown for Harmon. Our Bass Pro Shops catch of the game from Kelvin Harmon as Ryan Finley threw three TD passes and Dave Dorn has the win. His 38th as the head coach of the Wolfpack. Dave, the final 35 to 21 as the final seconds tick off the clock. NC State is undefeated. Yeah, and the score is going to go to NC State here, and rightly so. They outplayed Virginia today from start, not from start to finish, but enough. But I'm so impressed with both teams. I think Virginia is going to give a lot of people some problems. Final seconds tick off, and NC State wins it. For highlights and must-see moments from this game and others, check out theacc.com. Join us for the ACC Blitz, powered by the all-new 2019 Ram 1500 next Saturday at noon Eastern, followed by Syracuse at Pitt. You've been watching coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football, an exclusive production of Raycom Sports.